Welcome to episode quattro of Let's Get Podcast. On this Quattro de Mayo, happy Cinco de Mayo tomorrow, by the way. If you're going to, well, this won't be out by then, but yeah. Today I'm joined by <laughs> those guys. <laughs> We're off to a great start. Okay. <laughs> so I'm joined by a couple people here. We've got the mainstay on the podcast since episode one, Andrew. Welcome, Andrew. Hello. Welcome back. I'm here. He's here. And we also have the only person more transient than myself, Josh. Remember, he was in the first episode of a podcast. The first episode? Happened. <laughs> it was a happening episode. It was the first episode. He was the first part. And he was there. And then he just bounced out for the second half. Why don't you defend yourself on that? Because I, I, you never listened to the second half, but I made good fun of you. Yeah, I heard about that. I was uh, traveling the world. I came, getting in adventures and shit. But I'm back now. I'm ready for this episode. <laughs> this I'm going to miss any more This is going to be the best episode ever. <laughs> Podcast motherfucker. So Do you happy. speak it? That was also a reference to Pulp Fiction. I like that. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Nobody liked that. My favorite reference. Yeah. Okay. And now for the news. <laughs> Every news. Um, all the news is... Just released a, my game video. New game. news. Okay. It's the new news then. Yeah. So... <laughs> that was a good one. Wow. I could taste carbonation. By the time right this now. goes out, it'll probably be old news. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's true. Okay. Here's some old news. Um, I just released my game room video. Um, it's a series that's done by the contributors on RetroWare TV, such as myself and others. And I show off my game collection and uh, my future game room, which isn't much to look at on its own. It's an unfinished basement, but I try to make it entertaining, and it's been pretty well received. But seriously, you guys should definitely go on RetroWare TV and check out uh, John's and and Ito's and Billy's, the people that did it before. Like, Ito's is insane. Like, he's got a full-blown arcade. He's got like a dozen arcades. you got to watch it. It's awesome. He charges money to get in. He should. It's where the wine flows like, right, the beer flows like wine. In California. Hmm? Aspen. What? California. I don't get it. Where the beer flows like wine. Is that what? It, what? Is that a thing? You just quoted Dumb and Dumber and then didn't get the Dumb and Dumber quote that Holy I Holy shit. With? I didn't know that that was what he that was really, from. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't really quote it. Ido quoted it. Eric just watched it. Oh, Eric's video. just an idiot. I'm quoting. <laughs> More <or less>. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You can do that. Thing. I'm right. quoting quotes and don't know where the quotes are quoted from. Off the podcast. Okay. For those that don't know, I've been on three of four episodes of Retro TV, the podcast, and I've been on the first two episodes of the site's new series, uh, The Video Game Years, 1977 and 1978. And you can find all of it on the website that hosts my stuff, in case you didn't know, RetroWareTV.com. Yeah, the series is going well. It's well received. Um, 1979 is all recorded and it's being edited now. So look for that out soon, hopefully. Again, for those that don't know, it's basically in the style of VH1's I Love the 80s, but it chronicles the major events in gaming during a specific year. So each year it's broken down by by year. That episode is a year. Each year is an episode. That's what I'm getting. It's what I'm trying. That's what I'm driving at here. Okay, that's what I'm trying to get to. I'm not making any sense. It, but they're basically 15 to 20 minute parts, and they're released one at a time until the episode's complete. And it features most of the contributors on RetroWare TV. There's some popular guest appearances and uh, more coming in the future. Um, oh. Okay, and it's very informative and funny. Thanks, Josh. That was funny. Um, and uh, I don't burp. I mean, it was funny. Oh, sorry, Andrew. Me. Andrew, good job. <laughs> and as usual, I tend to focus more on the comedy aspect, for better or for worse, than the informational portion. But there's some of that too. It's because you don't know shit. I don't know things. I just make jokes. Fuck it. You know, but I love the 80s. It's all comedians. So I'm just trying to like, every time I have a punchline. So I don't know. But whatever. Style over substance. That's how I roll, man. Style <laughs> over substance is the way to be. Anyway, so it's interesting stuff. Peep it out. Um, also, exciting news um, for Retro Art TV. They were mentioned in Retro Gamer Magazine. It's a popular British and, yes, you guessed it, Retro Gaming Magazine. Hence the name Retro Gamer Magazine. Ooh. So they're big time now. They're the biggest time. You're gonna, you're gonna Let's just drop right it there. there. Let's just do the entire podcast with no transitions whatsoever. Okay, now we're doing this. Yeah. Um, so this episode of the podcast is technically supposed to be the one for April, and obviously we're a little late getting it out, but it's not so easy to coordinate with everyone's schedule. Josh, <clears throat> just kidding. The adventures of getting in them. Of what? The adventures I was getting in them. Oh yeah, yeah. And around them. Oh, I forgot about that. In and around in adventures. adventures. <laughs> hey, we're back to the first podcast episode. Um. So, yeah, we're late, as usual, but I also really want to do another podcast this month, and that will be the official one for May, and it's going to coincide with a certain game release that this month. I, I, what could that be? I don't, I don't know. You guys know what could it? I don't. Okay. We'll go with that. Um, but I'd like to have Andrew... What is he talking about? <laughs> I was trying to think of something. <laughs> but I'd like to have Andrew, Josh, if you guys want to be back, 
You're more than welcome. This is we're gonna have this right now. We're gonna talk this out right now, live on the podcast, <laughs> not live. What's our motivation? Tell us. Tell us. I'm not telling tell you me. what it is. Well, it's I want to know what game it is. <laughs> it's a game. Is it that's a coming Nintendo out. game? No. Is it a handheld game? Definitely not. But it's coming out next month. Is it some shitty Wii yeah. game? Next month well, being April or shit? It's coming out this month because we're no. This, we're in May. And technically, this is the one for April. But we're going to release... Recon an- Future Soldier? <laughs> no. But we're releasing another one this month. So if you guys are down. You guys what down game? for the next podcast? Okay, fine. I'll just tell you. Uh, hold on. I'm going to beep it, it out. out. Oh, that comes out this month? Yep. Are you sure? Yep. Oh. I'm pretty sure. But I'm going to cut this whole part out. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right, that's fine. So anyway, it's going to definitely be me and Ben. And tentatively, Josh and or Andrew or whatever. Yeah. We'll see. Anyway, so I'm starting to get going on my next video or videos hopefully, um, for this month as well, so stay tuned for that. Page turn. Turn the page. Like Teddy Rush, can turn it. <laughs> should have issued us iPads so we could flip through it without yeah. making uh, That noise. would have made more sense. Yeah, I should have bought you guys iPads. <laughs> also, you can find me on Twitter under GoingMon047. Yes, not Let's Get, but GoingMon047, just for confusion's sake. Why not? But you can send us your questions and comments that we will address in the next episode of the podcast. Um, we're going to be addressing some at the end of the show right now. But um, you can email us at let's get 047. That's just let's get 047. No apostrophe or exclamation points or anything. Is there an umlaut? There's not. At gmail.com. Um, and so please tell us what you like and what you don't like about the podcast. For example, do you like the banter at the beginning of the podcast or not? Which parts? Do you like the blog and links? Because that's a pain in the ass. If you don't like it, I'll cut it. <laughs> he wants to cut it. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. Do you like music in the background? That's also kind of a pain, but I don't care. I'll put it. It makes it more interesting to listen to. Fuck it. Anyway. Etc. Question mark. Okay. I'm noticing oh. my beer is almost empty. Hey, cheers to that. What are we drinking, Andrew? We are drinking Avery 19, but it's almost gone and we need to open another beer. Man, we do need to open another beer. Josh, what are you drinking? I'm drinking Tattoo and Cherry Coke. Damn, that's good. Bringing it back to when I was 20. <laughs> I didn't know what alcohol was. I just drank anything. I will say, though. At all. Tattoo is, like, smooth. You could just drink that without any Coke or anything. So I, I mean, get us a beer real quick? Let's go get beer. Okay. So let's talk shit about Andrew while he's gone. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Let me just go. Okay, let's go. Yeah, okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Oh, drinks. I is want to drink rest? it. Don't hit it. Man, don't get me right started. Edge, jerk. Living on the edge. Living on the edge. Oh, I'm going to put living on the edge in there. Because I always put a music reference in there. Jamasu <laughs> All right, next we're drinking. Oh, what? How the fuck do you say that? Sandwich. Wait, Sammichos? you would probably be better for that because you're German. You speak German, don't you? Yeah. No, you speak more German, don't you, Josh? It's not a German beer, though. Oh. It looks like a German word. Uh, product, oh, product of Austria. Oh, shit. Yeah, it is German then. Okay, so we're drinking Samichlaus. Is that how you say it? <laughs> well, it depends on where Sami- you're from in Germany. Samichlaus? Samichlaus? People from Munich would say Samichlaus. Samichlaus. Samichlaus? Yep. Samichlaus? Yep. Samichlaus. Okay, so we're drinking Samichlaus. Classic. <laughs> Malt liquor has fucking 14%. It's like... Fucking wine. Wine beer. Weird. Except good. Ooh. Not very carbonated either. Mm. Hmm. Here you are. Why don't you pour some to Andrew? To Andrew? I'm not going to too much. <laughs> mm. Very high alcohol. You can <laughs> smell that right away. I want to experience it. <laughs> it smells like a wet raisin. Almost no hop <laughs> character whatsoever. It does smell like a wet raisin. That's a very accurate description. No, no, no. It smells like a wet raisin in paint thinner. kind of smells like That glasses. is delicious. Oh, man. That. Oh, dang. That's really good. You remember... That, that beer that we had from 1993? Yep. It's That's a tri- what it tastes this like. This is a Bach. It's clearly a Bach. Triple Bach. Yeah, let me see the bottle. Triple Bach always tastes like raisins to me. Aged that was a good description. I always I always say raisins. Brewed only once a year on December 6th. This beer is aged for 10 months before bottling. Damn, it's good. Isn't that good? Mm-hmm. Dang. We got to savor the flavor. So it's only brewed on December December 6th? So this Why? Is for 10 months, that means this is from December of 2010. Bottled 2011, in 2010. Would, yeah. Damn. If this was bottled in 2010, that means it was actually brewed in 2009. Well, that's why this 12 ounce bottle of beer was 15 bucks. Wow. Yeah, was a enjoy. We can't afford a better mic. <laughs> Fuck off. This, <laughs> we, this beer is why we can't have nice the things. Six pack of this beer costs more than this mic. This is really good. Very raisiny. Dude, we're gonna have to. Get, we're gonna have to get another beer already. All right. Oh, I need to slow down then. All right. 
Let's continue podcasting. Transitionless. Hey. We're done talking about beer. <laughs> Let's talk about Dreams. other things. Let's talk about what video games you've been playing. Let's start with Andrew. What do you got? I have been playing Fez. I have been playing Fez. I love it. I have not been playing Fez. Josh, Tell me about it. it's I not think it. we'll probably end up talking about Fez later. It's not the topic of the episode. Oh, we might. But Josh, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to Andrew. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, <Okay>. sir. <laughs> no, but uh, what so is you, what else? What is we've been playing Fez? We're going to talk about it a little bit. Okay, what is Fez, Andrew? It's your turn. So Fez is a retro themed uh, platformer on the Xbox 360 that uh, the basic mechanic is that you can rotate the world. It's a 3D world, but you play on it only on one plane at a time. So you can see it from four different angles. And while you're playing it, it's two-dimensional, but then you can flip the levels in 3D space. And it's kind of hard to describe, but it's the most... uh, Out of all the like neo-retro stuff that's been out over the last few years, it feels the most authentically retro to me. Out of anything. It's a lot like Super Mario or Super Paper Mario? Uh, it kind of has a similar feel because, you know, Super Paper Mario has the whole 2D to 3D thing. And it has that, but it's, um, I don't know, it's different. Probably it was clearly inspired by, you know, games that had similar mechanics in it. So probably the best way to explain it to someone that hasn't seen Fez. If they yeah, I guess that would be a, a good way of describing it. Except you never actually play the game in 3D. You always play it in 2D. 3D dimensions. But... You three rotate the dimension. world throughout three dimensions, but you know only one of four sides. It's like you're playing on a little cube that you can rotate. Oh, speaking of cubes, you got to collect them. You got to collect, collect cubes. cubes in the game. How, how far are you? Oh, you had to restart. I, I had to start over. That's my biggest complaint with it. Is uh, first off, it has some pretty nasty bugs in it. If you leave the game while you're in a room that has brick walls, your game becomes unplayable. Brick walls only. It yes. could be a different room? Yes. Oh, that's weird. It's very strange. Your game becomes unplayable. That happened to me once after mm-hmm. I had about 12 or 13 cubes. And then the second time, my four-year-old decided to play it without me. <laughs> and you can't have more than one saved game. So mm-hmm. he started a new game and it overwrote my game. That's, and I had to start all over. In this one, it's just way too easy to start over. You yeah. know, like you just pick, start a new game, and like that's it. It's, it's too easy to be. <laughs> that's funny. It's authentically retro. That's yeah, true. Yeah, that's it's true. one save game at a time. That's it right. Is, yeah. That's it. You can't even save. You got to play all the way through. Okay, we'll talk about that in a bit. Anything else about Fez? It's really great. It's really great. I love it. Have you been playing any other stuff? Sorry. Um. Well, I play a lot of games on my iPhone because that's all I find time to play. So. It's, and it's also accessible when you're pooping at work. Yeah, it's all exactly. <laughs> I can do it while I'm taking a sheet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've been playing Angry Birds Space because I don't care what anyone says. I love Angry Birds. I, I love it too. Yeah, and um. Let's see what else did I play recently. There's always like all the games that just constantly get updated with new levels. Where's my water? I love that game. I don't love it, but I, I own it. I play it. Have you played any of the Kairosoft games? Oh, no. Dude, you got to get on that, man. Kairosoft games are so good. I really wanted to do Is a that review. Game Dev Story? Yeah. Game Dev Story. Dude, they have like seven or eight now. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've only played, played two. Games. They have Grand a bunch. Grand Prix Story, I played that one a lot. Let's go there. Um, they have Game Dev Story. They have... Um, Sauna they have Story. They have Town. They have... Um, it's not sauna hot tub spa steam room hot spring story hot spring story (laughs) what the hell Um, (laughs) hot spring story they have academy school academy story they have like mall story mega mall story they have um f1 what do you know f1 grand prix story. they have grand prix story they have um venture town story or something like that um, there's a new one. There's like a space one now. Damn, they're up to eight or nine. I love those Kyrosoft games. I was actually going to do a review of all of them when they had five games out. I was going to do it on my iPad and shoot it in the bathroom in the dark. And I started recording <laughs> it and it didn't look good. And I'm like, I-, I don't know if people really want this. And now that there's so many games, I mean, I, I wanted to do one video with every Kyrosoft game in it. And I don't know. I mean, you know, RetroWare TV is a, it's a retro gaming site, obviously, but you know I, I like to do just a bunch of different stuff. You know I, I like to do so I've done some modern games and I've gotten some flack for doing that, but I like to do a lot of different stuff. And I don't know how how popular the Kairosoft games are and like how well known. Game Dev Story I know was pretty popular. Really? Because I mean, if it's not that well known, I'd like to like get it out there to the yeah. public because I want people to know about these games. They're awesome. Well, they don't. They haven't released them all on Android because that's I have an Android system phone and they, there's only three of them, I think. They, all those ones you just mentioned, the new ones, I haven't seen them. Yeah, yeah, so no, and actually, there were some that were there were some ones that were exclusive to uh, to Droid for a while, like because the well, not Droid, but Android or whatever. So there were some ones that were um, that w- there were some ones that were Android exclusive, like uh, Grand Prix Story, mm. before it yeah, came out here. Yeah, true. so 
Um, what else? What else have you been playing, Andrew? Um, hmm, I don't know. That's it, really. Okay. Plants vs. Zombies. That's, you know, that's always... That's good. old news, but it's been like... My wife discovered it, and my four-year-old discovered uh. it. And so they are both playing it constantly, and so I got sucked back into it, too. So I've been playing that a lot lately. Oh, yeah. Speaking of four-year-olds, Josh has some news. I have a four-year-old. He has a four-year-old. Tomorrow his wife's <laughs> going to give birth to a four-year-old. It's going to be the creepiest <laughs> shit ever. It's going to hurt like a She's bitch. She's been in there for a long time. <laughs> Marinating. Yep. Josh, what have you been playing video games? Well, speaking of old news, been playing a lot of Skyrim. Ooh. Took Ooh. a few months off, wow. but I'm still playing it. Rim job. I wish I could find time to play that. I want to. Yeah. Every time I start a little session, I get sucked in for like three hours, which is fine now, but now that I'm about to have a child, I don't think I'll have that much time. They sleep most Whenever they sleep. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. You just give them something and make them sleep. And they play sleep games. half the day anyway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I don't... I don't... Really play a lot of games that are like that. I guess I don't. I definitely don't play any online MMOs, and I know it's not multiplayer right now. Though I was reading a new issue of Game Informer. I guess they're going to release that soon. But but I really got sucked into that game for sure. I uh, I like it a lot. I'm only level 42. I think you go to 50 before you stop. I don't think you Max prestige out. or whatever like in Call of Duty. <laughs> but yeah, it's still fun. There's just so much, so many little things you can do, and it's become a little repetitive. But it's enough to keep me going and playing a lot. Um, and you can mod it. Well, I play on the PCs. So you can mod it pretty easy, and you know, make little graphic tweaks and things. And it looks it looks great. It's a great looking game for being you know pretty cheap and doesn't really require a lot of graphical stuff on your computer. <laughs> it doesn't have a high graphical requirements. I don't really have that great <sighs> graphics card, but wow, yeah, it works pretty well. <laughs> so you just <laughs> just <laughs> ignore it. <laughs> yeah, let's just ignore him burping like ridiculously. Oh, you look like you need more beer. I need to not have any beer for a little oh, bit. Okay. Um, so tell us about the uh, new texture mapping that they have for uh, for Skyrim. It, it's the uh, purple texture mapping. Yeah, it's awesome. Bonus. It's <laughs> like when you play that game, you're like, the one thing that's missing that... If I could think of one thing in that game, any game really, that I'd like to see is just bright purple <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Every purple. All the purple. I want all the purple shades <laughs> that exist. <laughs> Lavender. Roseberry, purple shades. Deal with all it. of them. Anyway, yeah, there's a, there was some random. There was an update that didn't mesh with one of the things I had done to it, and so there was all this purple crap. Like dragons were purple. Parts of the dragon was purple, not the whole dragon. Grapes were purple. Well, grapes were purple. <laughs> they became purpler, and everything was smoothed out with this update a couple months ago. And then I just was playing again recently, and only uh, chopping blocks are purple. <laughs> everything else is fine, but. The chopping blocks, the axes that are on the blocks are fun, but the chopping block itself is purple. Hmm. Can't Chop. get rid of it, but it's a minor inconvenience because there's not a lot of chopping blocks in the world. <laughs> of Skyrim. <laughs> Who gives a shit about chopping blocks anyway? <laughs> Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just thought of Skyrim, and it's always a sore subject with Eric, but I've been playing a lot of ROMs, Mm-mm. playing all my emulators on the wanna, PC. I don't want to play it. Playing a lot of uh, Nintendo 64. Oh. Got a whole bunch of games for that. Oh. The 64 emulator is funny you know, you could probably tell me more about all the little graphical stuff that the Nintendo 64 had, all the anti-aliasing and all that horse shit. It had anti-aliasing. Well, but it's just weird because the way, you know, everything on the 64 looked kind of smoothed out and it wasn't very sharp, I guess you could say, maybe compared to like PlayStation. It was just, you know, a lot of PlayStation are like jagged lines and 64 is like pretty smooth, almost like it, not blurry, blurry, but yeah, well, almost like that, yeah. <laughs> But on the computer, when you play the emulator, it, it makes everything sharp. Mm. But then there's certain textures that don't get sharpened, mm. and they're all blurry. So you have this mixture of textures sometimes that is kind of shitty. It's still really fun to play. It's awesome. I bought a, a Nintendo 64 controller online because I didn't have one. I sold my system, I think, a long time ago. And then I modified it by putting a GameCube analog stick in it, which is an awesome mod if you still use a 64 controller for anything. So we're going to so post... The, no. We're going to post a tutorial. Josh is going to host it. How to mod your N64 controller with a GameCube controller stick. Yeah, it's, well, it's also online in many places you could find it. But, you know, it's fun, man. You play with the authentic controller. I think yeah, all the other stuff, Nintendo and Sega Genesis, I just play with the Xbox controller, the wired one for the PC. But i just been playing a lot of ROMs. Got to get those old games. Got to get those ROMs, Pokemon. Because I like to think of myself as an old school gamer, but I'm not as... I don't have to be as authentic as Eric, who has to have the actual cartridge. <laughs> I just want to have all three thousand for all the you know all three thousand games and for all the systems. Josh, would you well, steal? Would you steal a car? 
I actually own Would you all the steal games? the Empire State Building? <laughs> well, I might. No, if I was no, you wouldn't. So why would you steal ROMs? He owns the games. He said he owns all three thousand. Uh, that's the thing. <laughs> it's actually legal because I do own them all. They're somewhere. I can't find them, but they're there, <laughs> and I own them. But I don't download those ones. No, <laughs> these are just backup copies. For what it's worth. Chop. Just in case all the other copies on the internet are gone, you have a backup. That's all I'm saying. For the it's internet. just for safety's sake. <laughs> I'm not trying to implicate myself or anyone else. <laughs> you said this on the first podcast, but I turned you in. They're coming to get you. Uh, so yeah. Oh, okay. I've been playing a lot of random random stuff. Nice. And also, I love the ROMs because you can save whenever you want. I know it's kind of that's cheating, really. Like playing Contra on NES. It's funny. We're going to talk about that. Well, I like to cheat because I like to save whenever. Because you could actually beat Contra with three lives on a ROM because you can just save any time. Like every five seconds, just keep saving, saving, <laughs> saving. And then if you fuck up, just go back to your last save point. Yeah, so I like you could to- also just hand the game to me and have me beat it and have the satisfaction of watching me beat it. I know. I just have to that win. Not- I can't lose. Out of context, that didn't sound very good. I don't know. You can beat it all you want. <laughs> you can watch me beat it. Um, do you guys want some? It wouldn't be a first. No, I'm good. Okay. So someone asked me what I've been playing. What you been playing? Oh, okay. All right. Well, I, I'm kind of unprepared, but I guess I'll just... So I've been playing Super Peach, <laughs> Super Princess Peach. Um, I've been playing that on the toilet, like Andrew. Um, it's I could take it anywhere. I just actually recently got it. It was a game that I was told it was pretty rare, and I ended up buying it at Toys R Us. It was like, I went there, and it happened to be like a buy one, get one 40% off sale day. So I got Super Princess Peach, and I got uh, Yoshi's Island DS, which I haven't really played yet. Um, but Super Princess Peach, it's awesome. I mean... It's a goofy game. It's like she's controlled by her emotions, and that's how you that's how you progress through the game. Aren't they all? <laughs> Aren't they? And, oh my! So yeah, it's like a dating simulator. Yeah. <laughs> so we won't touch on that anymore. Japanese game developers, basically. Um, so I also uh, picked up a PS Vita, PlayStation Vita. I'm sorry. I well, no, okay. Um, but I was I went to the Sears. There's a Sears that's getting demolished over by my house, and um, you know it was on sale. It was sixty bucks off. Of a three hundred dollar console, it was got, getting demolished as he bought it. Yes, as a run <laughs> so that the wrecking ball. That's why. I, that's why I got the discount. And they're like, "Oh my god, <laughs> you lost your pinky finger on the way." I don't know why I said that, um, but yeah. So I got the PS Vita and I got it with uh, Uncharted, which is good. That's actually the first Uncharted game I've played, even though I owned the first and second one on PlayStation Three. I just haven't played them. But what I've played of it, I, I like it. I need to get into it more. You know, what's funny is I always used to think it was ridiculous that you had games that you never played <laughs> and then the other day i was looking at mine and i have a, a stack of games that i haven't touched really nice i'm impressed i'm, I'm glad so, you got sorry it. continue by the no by the way i've also i've also surpassed the 1000 games mark wow congratulations hey, hey thank you you're a super nerd you're the biggest nerd now I don't know, something like 1,020 by now, but yeah. Um, I also picked up, basically the reason I wanted PS Vita is because there, there's not a great selection out for it right now, but I love Katamari, so I bought Touch My Katamari. Also, I've been playing Angry Birds Space when I'm pooping, just like Andrew. Another Angry Birds fan. So wait, you have over 1,000 games? Yeah. At an average of $20 a piece? Well, I, yeah, average, yeah. $20,000. Dang, don't break into my house. I have a wooden sword. I know how to use it. <laughs> and a security That's a system. lot of money, though, when you think about it. Yeah, let's not That's think about a lot it. Of money. Let's not. So, um, and I've also been playing Fez like Andrew. It's awesome. It's awesome. Indeed. Okay, moving on. Games you want to play, but the first episode of Walking Dead is on Xbox 360. You know what I'm playing when I get home tonight? Walking Dead. Sleeping, but tomorrow night, <laughs> <laughs> Walking Dead. I don't even know what that is. Telltale Games. Really, That's really sad. That episodic you know. content for Walking Dead. Oh. Look at this lyric. You know what Walking Dead is, right? Is he that the is that the TV series? Yeah, and the comic. I don't it's have on TV. Netflix. It's on Netflix oh my for God. a season. Sorry, I'm surprised you never watched it. Didn't I ever tell you about it? I think I told you. You've about watched it. it. Yeah, well, I've seen the first oh. the first season. I oh, you haven't seen, seen season, season two? Oh God! You have? I didn't tell you about that. Well, I think maybe. Mm. You just didn't take the time to watch it. It's, Zombies, whatever. It's really good. You'd probably like. It. I mean, everybody has running pains, but they're slow. Shambling, oh, okay. They're not this, fast. The best kind of they so they're real run. zombies. Don't get me into that conversation. They're good. They're, they're, yeah, they're so real they they kind of try to run. But so they're let's not Olympic track athletes, and that's the point. Olympic <laughs> track Kenyan zombies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're talking about Resident Evil Five tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk. So fast zombies or slow zombies? Josh, let's talk about it. I'm just kidding. Okay. Slow don't zombies. Have time. Don't get them started. Large star. numbers. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about eating. Andrew, what have you been eating? I don't know. Nothing interesting. Next, Josh, what have you been eating? 
I just eat a random assortment of goods. I eat a lot of candy. I love candy. Sugary things. I want candy. Twizzlers, the red and yellow ones that have stuffing in them. What? You will. Stuffing? Gross. Twizzlers suck. So they got stovetop well, in your Twizzlers. No, Andrew's right. Twizzlers do suck. I hate them. I hate them too. But these are different. They're cherry and lemon flavor, which everyone knows that like if you eat gummy worms or sour gummy worms, the red and yellow ones are the best, I think. They're the best combination, so this is... Oh, well, you're wrong, so shut up. I didn't say anything. I just, <laughs> I just made a face. You're wrong. They're good. I like the blue and green. Well, that's good also, but that's only certain... I think Trolley is the only brand that has blue and green. Whatever brand I eat is not Trolley, they're not blue and green. <laughs> They should have the face. Did you just reference in a regional off brand (laughs) bag cereal? (laughs) Anyway, I eat a lot of candy. They have (laughs) peanut butter Cheerios are fucking awesome. Really? I haven't seen that. They're so good. I didn't know that existed. There's all sorts of new cereals coming out all the times. Every time. Peanut butter Cheerios. I haven't tried this yet. There's a lot of new Cheerios that come out. There's Dolce de Leche. Those ones aren't so good. Whoa, Dolce de Leche. Those ones aren't so good. The peanut butter ones are awesome, though. Mm. I've eaten those. It's That's so what I've been eating. <laughs> Peanut butter Cheerios. That's awesome. I I'll, t- I'll accept that. I'll accept <laughs> that. That's something. There's raspberry M&M's. Eric just ah, tried those. They're, good. they're, very they're good. They're not raspberry. Oh. They're raspberry. Uh, right. You know what else? Uh-huh. We got a Costco membership. And we go on like every Saturday. Hmm. They have samples. You could have a meal out of Costco samples. And then you go up front and you get a hot dog and a drink for $1.50. That's what? A- wow. That's a whole day's worth of food. I might quit I my job. I fed the whole family for six bucks. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> come, come to Costco. Feed the whole family. <laughs> Horrible nutritional That's food. what I've been eating. <laughs> <laughs> I've been eating dollar hot dogs. <laughs> you got anything else, Josh? Well, I eat lots of stuff all the time. So you went to Euclid <laughs> Hall. Did you get anything special there? I eat different things at lunch. That's kind of my go-to meal. Thai lunch? Food. <laughs> lunch is eating your go-to meal? Pho. Yeah, man. Like, that's my big meal. Oh, okay. Dinner, I just kind of eat whatever. But lunch is like, that's when I'm I'm in the zone at lunch. <laughs> but no, I mean, yeah, a lot of, I mean, I always eat a lot of Asian food, pho, Thai nice. food, lots of Thai food. Um, Eric and I went to Euclid Hall recently. We did. They have good food there. They have great food there. They do. Um, nothing super interesting, but but just candy. Lots of candy. <laughs> my teeth are all rotting right now as we speak. Josh, what's candy? And because of that, I bought a new toothbrush. Oh. But we won't get into that right now. Is it is it automated? It spins. Okay. I don't know if it spins or just gyrates, <laughs> but it does something and it's awesome. So I've been <laughs> I've been eating pretty healthy for the most part because I'm doing P ninety X. What was it in the last uh, episode two? Andrew was doing P ninety X. We talked yeah, about that. I want to get back in. I've been running. You know what I'm getting? I'm so psyched about, dude. <laughs> Eric's guns are fucking ridiculous. I've been doing P ninety X. You can so. tell too. I'm getting those uh, those fucking five finger shoes. What's that? Psyched. You haven't seen the Vibram. So you can like run on rocks. Oh, well, you can you run, run on more naturally oh, because right. it feels like you're not even wearing a, a shoe. Nice. Okay. So you can run it's instead of heel striking. Thing. Yeah. Hmm. I'm so psyched. I come in next week. I'm fucking pumped. You can run like a Kenyan. Oh, and I'm doing the tough mutter again in a few weeks. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not doing it. I feel like. Dude, I have... seriously though, your arms. Look Thank you. Good man. Thanks. <laughs> That's not creepy. No, I'm just kidding. So, you know, but I have had a bunch of Doritos Tacos Locos Por Vida Ese. Um, you know, Cinco de Mayo coming up, so I'm trying to rip, rip it. So, um, but yeah, fucking delicious. Comes with cardboard sleeves so you can keep the cheese off your fingers. There's like cheese powder. The thing is, it's like literally like a Dorito. Have you had this yet? I have one, yeah. Isn't it good? It's almost like there's too much going on. Like It's like a flavor explosion. It makes In my your head mouth. hurt a little bit. It's so good. Okay, it's like the... the Taco shell is literally made of like nacho cheese Doritos. Have you had it? I haven't had it, but I've watched you have it. I've had it multiple <laughs> times. Watch me eat, okay? But like the the, the, the taco shell is literally a Doritos taco, like a nacho cheese Dorito I don't taco. think you need to explain this. Everyone knows. Oh, well, come on. But anyway. Commercials are pretty efficient. It's delicious. <laughs> the compliment was sufficient. Okay. Um, okay, so American Psycho reference. Um, but yeah, so it's once you have the, the thing is like if you get the big box combo, you get the Dorito Taco Loco, you eat that, and then you eat a regular taco, you will know the difference. because. Well, yes, you would. Because it's like so much better. And also, um, the one thing that kind of sucks is literally the consistency of a Dorito. So it's a little, it falls apart a and little bit more. And it's salty as fuck. And too. it's super oh salty. Oh my God. Yeah, but it's the so shell? delicious. I heard something. 
yeah. don't know if it actually exists, but like they're talking about having a cool ranch one. Like I would be all. On I board. would be both. That would be better. And I actually went to, and I and I always ask the the lady at Taco Bell as if she knows. Like last, I mean, I remember Red. I was on Reddit, and it was like, hey, there's gonna be this Dorito taco, and I went and I was like, do you know anything about the Dorito taco? And she's like, no, I get paid like minimum wage. I don't care about anything. <laughs> else. And I was like, oh, but you know, so I asked them. I was like, hey, do you guys have the? You know anything about the cool ranch? They're like, no. So, anyways, delicious. Put it. Yeah, like Josh mentioned, we went to Euclid Hall again. I guess last time I called it the Euclid, but it's Euclid Hall. And to any fans in Colorado, Euclid Hall, downtown Denver, it's awesome. Go eat there. They have crazy, awesome food. It's just really bizarre, but it's very good. Definitely, if you're old enough to drink because they have an awesome beer selection, Andrew, you got to go. It's really good. I plan to. You have to. Um, But last time I went there, I had a calamari and fish uh, sandwich. And I had chicken fried quail and waffles with a duck egg over the top. Wow. Isn't that weird? Well, well what s- beer did you have? Well, I had a Duchess de Bordenine, but... Well, there you go. And the server, when he asked if Eric wanted the duck egg on top, didn't say that. He just said, do you want it awesome or do you want it regular? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did, he did. He well, clearly, like, I want it awesome. <laughs> I was it's like, well, what is awesome? And he's like, duck egg, and you break open the egg, and you pour it over your waffles and chicken fried quail. I was like, I want to eat it. It was really good. I took a picture. I'll it was like it. a hipster breakfast, but it was awesome. <laughs> Seriously. I was like eating it, but I got a little in my neck beard. You know. <laughs> Josh was kind enough to share his assorted sausages, his assorted meats with me. I always share my meat with him. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> I want to play Nothing it. beats Josh's meat. Oh, Ooh, except, except me. me. Oh, <laughs> oh same Damn, same Z's. Oh, now you got to tickle my balls. Um. So anyway, he gave me some of his... <laughs> So he gave me some of his blood sausage, and that was delicious. I talked about it last time. It tastes like Christmas. We also went to One Up uh, Barcade in downtown Denver. Um, just opened up last year, I think. It's freaking awesome. They have like almost exclusively retro arcade games. Um, not that Dave and Buster D D Dave and Buster Dave and Dave and Buster you Buster Dave and Buster's DDR light gun garbage games. Yeah, it's we played the real Michael games. Jackson. Arcade you could play game. the Michael Jackson experience. Like, Ben, hey, shout out to Ben. Ben came out, and me and Andrew and Ben went down to 1UP, and we played him. It was awesome. Michael Jackson is awesome. Michael Jackson. You save little kids. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hold you on. You save him, all right. Oh, no. Respect. Okay, respect. <laughs> so, we're moving on. Um, let's just talk a little bit about what we were talking about last time. The topic this time, we're talking about modern gaming through the eyes of retro gamers. Just like last time, this is part two. Continuing the discussion. Um, last time we talked a little bit about why we're talking about this. You know, people that weren't around when we were around. We're old. We're all old. Andrew, you're 30. Yep. Josh is about to be 30. And once he's 30, I'm going to be 30, right? A little shortly after that. So we're old. Um, so we talked a little bit about our our video game backgrounds, me and Andrew. But now, Josh, tell us about your video game background. What's you? What are you all about? I'm just all about games. Okay, so moving no, on. A, <laughs> no, just same as any kid in our generation. You know, Christmas 88, get an NES. <laughs> get the NES Zapper, play Duck Hunt forever. My parents probably played it more than I did. Although my parents didn't take it from me, like Eric's. And they didn't take... Shout they, out to Eric's parents. <laughs> Dude, they never gave it to me in the first place. They gave it to my dad. That's a tra- Well, that's a travesty. Okay. Uh, I love you guys. I love also, you. I love my, my parents, you. unlike Eric's parents, uh, <laughs> allowed me the pleasure of having... All the cereals. The pleasure. Nintendo cereal. <laughs> Let's not talk the about Nintendo that. Nintendo cereal system. Don't talk about it. I ate it sad. a couple of times. So sad. No, just I also had the Nintendo cereal. I hate you both. It was it was the two Zelda. flavors. Yeah, it was Zelda and it was Mario. <sighs> Did it, it taste like Mario flavor. and Zelda? Hold on, it was fruit flavor and it was berry flavor. Mm. Now berry is a fruit, but it's separate. Oh, fruit and berry. Who's berry? Is that your hairdresser? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> is his name Barry? That's another podcast. Right. So, so his chi- name is not Barry. So Chi Chi. It's no. Chi Chi. Mm-hmm. Like Mun Chi Chi. Or like if you speak Spanish, Chi Chi's. That means tits. Yeah. Happy Cinco de Mayo. And then I pretty much I don't know about you, Andrew, but I pretty much grew up as a Nintendo kid. I mean I had yeah, me you know Nintendo, yep. Super Nintendo. I didn't have a Genesis although a lot of my friends did, so I liked it a lot. I played a lot of it, but I didn't I think, own it. Yeah, I think I mentioned last time that when the Genesis came out, I was totally like taken in by their advertising. It was all like blast processing. Yeah, <laughs> Genesis is so awesome. And Nintendo is lame as fuck. I guess it is then. And I was like, yeah, Genesis is awesome. TV doesn't lie. And then I and then I realized much later that I was an idiot. Sega. Yeah. I think yeah, Mortal yeah. Kombat having blood on the Genesis and sweat oh, yeah. on the SNES totally like sealed it for me. But like, the Genesis is better. They made it. They made up for it in Mortal Kombat too. 
well, yeah. and then basically any other SNES game except Sonic was better. <laughs> I'm not sure anything was better on the Genesis. Well, this is Lion a, King. Well, that yeah. See, this is a that's a lame reference, but I was gonna say something. Aladdin. Aladdin. Aladdin much better on the second. Yeah, game. I agree. the graphics were totally look. It looked like the cartoon. And Lion King, all the Disney movies probably were better yeah, on the same. Yeah, they maybe, looked a lot better. I don't know if all of them were, but... The Capcom were. license games were better on, on, the Genesis. on Genesis. But and otherwise, SNES games. games. Oh, yeah. eh, fuck sports games. So anyway, we don't talk about sports. Moving on. <laughs> no, what do you got? Yeah, anyway, just Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. Super when I was young, I couldn't remember this. <laughs> <laughs> Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. When I was dead broke, man, I couldn't picture this. 50 inch screen, money green, leather sofa. Got two rides, a limousine with the sofa. I remember getting a Nintendo 64, greatest day of my life. I went out on Thanksgiving, Black Friday, hmm. to go buy Ocarina of Time. Thought I was going to be in some long ass line at Target on Colfax, and I wasn't. Hmm. Pretty much me and like four old ladies, and I went right to the video game section, and I was the only one there. So wow. then I spent like 14 straight hours playing that game. <laughs> That's how it was when I went to buy Banjo Kazooie because I thought it was going to be way bigger than it ended up being. I was like, <laughs> I pre ordered it at Target and I ran over there and there was like a thousand copies of Banjo Kazooie. I was like, oh. And then there was an old guy there who was like, do you want to pre order Quest 64? I'm like, uh, well, I'll wait and see. <laughs> wah, wah. I'm glad I didn't know pre order that. So. Um, and then I ended up getting a job with Eric at a video game store. Boy. And that was where I stopped probably buying games owning them myself because then I started to live vicariously through you <laughs> and I just borrowed all of your shit yes you did I pretty much have only bought like three games in that whole last you know, 15 years dick. that I've known you I just borrowed all you I pretty much have like half of my collection if you want to call it that is, is mine <laughs> I've had a couple of them for a long I've had your Lego Batman for like two years so I guess I have like 1,050 games you dick I mean it's if you played them one you played them all I kind of want to get Lego like it, Star Wars The Complete Saga. That one's probably the most fun of all the Alex series. would like that a lot. Lego Star Wars is awesome. I that's the best. If you're going to pick one, that would be the one I'd pick for sure. It's the most funnest. So last time we talked about some things such as uh, being able to play in the same room, you know, versus playing online now. Um, you know, that's something that's kind of lost and, and I, I miss it. You know, it was kind of awesome. It's like, hey, dude, you want to come over and play video games now? It's like, eh, I can just hop online and play and I don't know. I miss it. Last time we talked about um, having to be able to make do with what you got. You know, like we didn't have necessarily like big allowances and we didn't have a lot of money growing up. So you'd end up putting up with crap just because you had to. You had to. It's the only game you had. You just got to get the most fun you can out of what you got. Fester's Quest. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, that's actually, I like that game. That's that a, game is hard. It's hard. It's really hard, but it's like Blaster Master. It's a good game. Since I started doing yoga, when I go like that, it goes... It's supposed to be the fountain of youth, my ass. All right. <laughs> so um, we talked about the achievement system a bit um, and how it's a good thing. We like it. It's a good thing. It makes you think differently about games. Um, we talked about replayability, old versus new. I said new games have more inherent replayability. Replayability. Um, well, I would like to replay Super Mario 3 like once a month, pretty much. Um, but Andrew disagreed with that, and we're going to talk about that a little bit coming up here. We have some we have some listener feedback on that. Uh, we talked about downloadable games, content, virtual consoles, stuff like that. Um, we talked about soundtracks, um, 8-bit versus modern, you know, generic soundtracks like classical music and whatnot that we have nowadays. But now we're going to talk about some new stuff. Let's open up some new topics. Let's expand on what we talked about last time. This could be the last episode of this topic. We're definitely going to talk about something completely different later on this month, but we might continue this in the future. So let's just see if we can if we can seal the deal. If not, we'll continue this topic next time. I think this topic could be an entire podcast by itself, so I'm sure we'll end up talking about it again. This one right here? Just the whole retro gaming through the eyes of modern... Modern eyes through the games of retro higher balls. You're not driving. <laughs> <laughs> so so retro balls. Um, they're old balls, and they just hang lower. They kind then. of droop a little. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. It just happens. What we're going to talk about now is uh, gamers being more common nowadays. The idea of a quote-unquote gamer. It's more commonplace nowadays than it was back then um, because it was more hardcore. It was like the people that were really, really hardcore about gaming it was kind of a niche thing, I guess. I don't know. But versus nowadays where... You were where a nerd if you played games. You were a nerd if you played games. I mean, there was kind of a different aspect. We're going to talk about this a little bit later on when we talk about arcades. But, you know, 
in arcades, it was basically like those were considered the hoodlums and like the the hardcore guys, you know, like hanging out in arcades and stuff in the 80s, like the badass playing arcade games. It's like kind of hilarious by today's standards. But, you know, I think there was this funny transition. It was like arcades started and then like the people that were in arcades were like those hard asses. And there was just a bunch of nerds. And then arcades went completely away. And now they're kind of cool again just because retro stuff. It's because we're of- old enough for... To be able to drink and play games. And, and and, yeah, exactly. And appreciate it. Barcade. I well, love it. Well, I think it. arcades went away because the hardware at home caught up to it. Yeah. yeah. There's no need to go to an arcade. That's true. But, um... You know what I'm going to buy soon? What? I'm going to buy a Ms. Pac-Man cocktail table Ooh. and a fucking pinball machine. Dude, did you, you haven't seen my game room video yet. I'm going to buy a Donkey Kong machine and I'm going to buy a MAME cabinet. Sweet. And a pinball machine. I want to buy Space Invaders really bad. That scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. I stayed at my aunt's house and like it was crazy. This Space Invaders cabinet, like it had alien eyes that lit up. It was scary. It was scary. I want it. But I want it. I'm going to live in an arcade. Okay. I'm going to. Okay. Palmer's Arcade. The arcade cocktail tables are awesome. There's a bar. We Maybe we'll talk about this later. But there's a bar in Austin called Kung Fu. And it doesn't really compare to 1-Up. They don't have as many. But they have a bunch of those cocktail tables. They're yeah, awesome. Yeah, those are awesome. Because it's so interactive. You, you're playing you know, directly face And you can set your person. drink right on your game. It's perfect, man. That's, awesome. <laughs> That's a great idea. For sure. I like drinking and I like video games. So put them together. But basically, I mean, you know, it used to be like a more niche thing. It was more hardcore, but now it's more casual, so accessible to the masses. Um, we're talking about Wii, talking about iPhone games, those kinds of things. I mean, you know, Wii really was like revolutionary for like casual gamers because it really brought in a whole new market. And we did really, really, really well out of the gates. Not so well now. I think it's kind of fading. The charm is fading. The whole waggle controls. But at the time, it was kind of revolutionary. It was a good price point. For casual gamers and a lot of people jumped on it but it also you know spawned a bunch of really generic kind of lame casual games and it really kind of shut out some of the hardcore gamers so i mean <laughs> they, they put out a couple of hardcore games hardcore games this set this generation but hopefully the wii u i mean i'm a little worried but i want to buy it um i love nintendo i'm a nintendo fanboy for life basically but um i don't know let's talk about it so games being more niche Back in the day versus now, they're commonplace. What do you got? I already talked about everything. I, <laughs> I would think you covered the topic. I mean, I don't know. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> the, uh, I still feel like um, there's still kind of two two worlds when it comes to games. Like, there's the casual games. Like, you can talk to anybody about Angry Birds or, or, or fucking uh, Words with Friends <laughs> or any other number of iPhone games or a handful of Wii games. But most people haven't heard of Left 4 Dead. Yeah. You know, or Fez, or whatever. I mean, there's still the gamers, and then there's everybody else. And everybody plays games now. But there's still, like, video games still have their own little world. It's bigger than it was when we were kids, but it's still there. It's still the same thing. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, like you said, everybody plays games. My mom has a DS. She does, like, the brain training games. Um, I guess I got her Big Brain Academy. Oh, and and Brain Age and that kind of stuff. And um, she likes Angry Birds. I mean, my mom plays video games. Everybody plays video games, basically. Yeah, my mom plays video games. She plays Angry Birds on her iPad. Nice. All the time. That's awesome. And she's always asking me, like, what other games should I get for my iPad? <laughs> water. I'm like, where's my water? Where's my water? <laughs> Infinity Blade. I think as well, I think as the hardware has become more commonplace and you can find something that's infinitely more advanced than what you had in the eighties on your phone nowadays, it's it, it, all that it just is going to spread out so much more between all sorts of audiences and everyone needs something to do while they're pooping. <laughs> Basically is what it comes down to. People got bored of pooping with nothing to do. <laughs> just reading books, fucking books, wipe yeah. my ass with a book. <laughs> um, I mean, it's like maybe like all new technology. Like I, I'm not really a big proponent of 3d TVs and all that crap. I don't like going to see movies in 3d, but you know, maybe, maybe now people are getting more into 3D technology, more people own 3D TVs, but at first, when it first came out, it was expensive, and it's just kind of a, like I said, a niche thing, and there's just some people who are going to be really into it, and the rest of us are kind of like, whatever, when it gets cheaper and more commonplace, and every single TV you buy has a 3D option, I don't really think Nintendo knows what the hell they're doing. <laughs> I don't think they do. <laughs> they're kind of, they seem just kind of lost, like they're not really sure they, what direction they, they, they had. had a, they had a huge hit with the Wii for like two years, and they're just trying to ride that wave as far yeah. as they can, and it's yeah. not working anymore. I mean, it's kind of sad because, I mean, I love Nintendo, but they really did kind of leave their hardcore fans in the dust when they were talking about like doing all these, these really casual games, and yeah. there was a lot of complaints about that. 
that. And, you know, I remember Reggie just talking about like, oh, no, we're going to have this game and whatever. And, and like, we're still going to cater to the, red, you know, hardcore audience. And they had a couple games. But, man, there's just so much, like, really bad casual games for the Wii. And, well, and a lot of third-party developers, they don't even bother with the Wii anymore. Yeah. Like, why? I don't think that we ever had any games, like, good games that weren't from a first-party. Yeah, no, not developer. many. <laughs> I mean, That's about right. Not know. many. I don't, I wouldn't. There's so you many can count on one hand games. for sure. I'm <laughs> pretty much, yeah. I mean, you when we've gone into Best Buy and you just look, it's like a joke. When yeah. You look at the stack of Wii games and some of the the names and just the carnival games. Game, they're just so cheesy and so cheap, and that's the kind of thing you should be playing on your phone. Babysitter, just like all the Connect games. Yeah, same fucking thing. It's all dance this, dance that, dance there. exercise this, exercise that. Star Wars mini game, <laughs> which which <laughs> I heard was not so good. Yeah. So I guess we mentioned this before, but, you know, talking about arcades, they used to be crazy popular place to hang out. Um, I used to hang out in arcades before they kind of went away, uh, but now they're pretty much all gone except for Dave and Buster's um, and a couple other places. I mean, they're really not good. Um, even if I went into a Chuck E. Cheese like a long time ago, and even then it was still like all those same games you see, like you're in a car. You're doing a car driving game or like a motorcycle it's racing all, it's game. It's all racing, shooting, yeah. dancing. R- racing, shooting, dancing is really all it is. I mean, it's like those active games like, oh, it's cool, you know, on a date or whatever. If you're 13, I guess you could do something like that oh, and that'd and be fighting. Fun. And fighting, maybe, maybe cheesy at like Tekken. Maybe not even that. Sometimes, yeah, like they usually have something. Yeah, but I mean, like the main ones they have on the floor are going to be those, and like tucked away in the corner. Sometimes at Dave and Buster's, you can find like Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Junior, and Mario Brothers, and those are awesome games. But they just, I mean, there's just not a whole lot of like the retro games. They're like the really, really good like arcade games. Everything's now just like light gun games and dancing games, like you said. So, but really, when you think about it, like what else are you going to play for you know fifty cents a pop? Yeah. Like, you're not going to play first-person shooters in the arcade. It just doesn't work. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what else they would do. I mean, it makes sense that they're gone, well, I, if you I, ask me. Yeah, I think it has to do with the hardware. I mean, the, you can play the same graphics and the same games at home, but I think in the arcades like that, they have to come up with something that's a little more interactive. Yeah. Like Dance Dance Revolution, you can play it at home, but that stupid soft pad yeah. never feels as good as the hard one that's at the arcade. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I mean, yeah, no, no, definitely that's true. But I mean, there's also like the competition aspect, like actually playing with someone like face to face, like putting a quarter up, like I'm going to play this guy at Street Fighter next. Like there's something that's that we're really losing with that, like with all the, the new stuff. And I mean... It's cool, but at the same time, we're losing some stuff with our roots, and I don't know. That Pac-Man game, they have a one-off. It's shit. That is so good. Four-player Pac-Man. What's it called? It's four-player Pac-Man. Well, it has a name. It's like a Pac-Man versus. Yeah, it's, it's like Pac-Man that... Championship Edition, but you can no. eat each other. Yeah, it's it's, it's exactly what it is. It's called, Pac-Man though. Championship Edition, but you can eat each other. It's four-player versus Pac-Man. It just had, but the it points have nothing to do with it. It's not about like, it doesn't matter how many pellets you eat or how many. Yeah, you, you just gotta eat the other pack. Yeah, as long as you're the last one standing. Exactly. Yeah, that game is so oh, God, fun. It's so but good. it's really quick. It's yeah. fast paced, and yeah. you get like five levels for one quarter. It's really yeah, cool. it's, it's it's good. Yeah, you get a lot of value yeah. out of that game for sure. And it's I mean it's good. It's it's quick enough that like they can make their money. And it's also long enough that you feel like you've actually gotten your money's worth. And work. you can set your drink on it. And you can say, there's like a little holder for your for your beer. It's perfect. Four so, holsters. I mean, I guess, the, yeah, well, whatever. I mean, there's four players. So I guess that kind of comes back to the, the resurgence of retro gaming now. There's there's more arcades popping up different places in the country. In, in you know, California and Oregon and in Colorado, you know, we have one up. Um, in Texas, and actually, One Up was originally going to start in Texas, but there was another similar idea that popped up at that time, so he decided to come to Colorado. Yeah, really. mm-hmm. What's the name of that uh, pinball place in Longmont? Oh, it's um, in Lions. Um, in Lions. Yeah, God, I can't remember. It's like the pinball hall. No, it's not the pinball hall. It's, I it's went there basically it's a it's a bar that has a shitload of pinball machines. Yeah, right? yeah. So it's cool. I mean, you know, it's like you know. Basically, the ki- we were the kids that grew up playing all these games, and now there's a market for us. I mean. We're like the baby boomers of <laughs> video games. The I don't baby know. gamers. The, the baby gamers. Boomers. Bamers. I mean, I, I love that 1UP has all those retro arcade because, I mean, they do have some newer arcades. I guess the newest one they probably have is that four player Pac Man. But yeah. other than that, it's all retro games and they're all fucking awesome. Yeah. They also have Giant Jenga. That's kind of an aside. But they, I mean, they have Ski Ball, they have Pinball. Uh, you shouldn't just gloss over the Giant Jenga. I mean, they have <laughs> Jenga where it's all made out of two by fours. So it's like three feet tall. 
and pretty awesome. Josh and I have a picture that we put up on Facebook with like this massive like stack. Four and a half feet at the end. What was the what was the high record? It was like forty four high or stacks high. I don't know. No idea. We 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 did good. We did real good. I don't know if we did that, but we did real did good. Did you like combine multiple jingas? Into no. Like super tall jingas? No, I don't awesome. know. The thing is, when you're drinking, like everyone's shit spills together, and I'm sure that some stacks are higher than others. And everyone's just like, oh. <laughs> sometimes people try and knock over your stuff, and then you got to knock them out. Yeah, that happened once. Almost. Yeah, I would never play that inside. I'd go to the outside. Outside, outside would be better. Yeah, yeah. off the podcast. I don't think it's something that's going to be around forever. I think that, like, you think we're in a bubble. Well, for sure, because think about kids right now who are freaking trained on, like, what, what have we got? Oh, we're like, in modern warfare. Surly teenagers playing modern warfare. Yeah, yeah. but retro games. games are kind of like, they're like in. Fad. They're like an in, but like in a fad kind of way. Like, those mm. kids are going to the places while well, they can't go to 1UP because they're not old enough. Well, actually, <laughs> as an aside, no, we, we learned this last time Eric and I went there during the day on a Saturday. You can be any age up to 16. But if you're 16 to 20, you can't go in there. It's so weird. We went in there, and there's a little kid, run, there's some like little 10-year-old kids running around. Oh, and I yeah. was like, Yeah, we talked about actually maybe going there with the kids. And yeah. I was like, what is this? And then the bartender told oh, you can be up to 16. And I, well, that's actually pretty awesome, though. Like yeah. you said, I mean, yeah. you can get little kids into it. But oh, Alex would crap his pants. That's awesome. That we should do that. I mean, you guys have keeled. I guess it just, we have a different appreciation for it because we, I mean, Grew we up. were pretty young, but we actually were in an arcade right. at the time when those games were in the, in the arcades when they were new. So we have a different appreciation for it than, you know, I would just call them Call of Duty kids. Like, first-person shooter kids are never going to quite get it. They may think it's cool and it's a yeah. but I think that eventually those, and I, I will be sad if that day comes, but I think eventually those arcade bars will, they just won't be as popular and they'll, they'll go away. Well, that's why 16 is the cutoff age, because that's where you play Modern Warfare and you're surly. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you're surly. But we you need become to, surly. At <laughs> that's we a need surly. to enjoy it as much as you can now, because they're yeah. not, and really they're not all cool. Like, you mentioned the one in Texas, and... I just said that briefly earlier, but it's, it's called Kung Fu, and it's a really cool concept, but it's like one up like a quarter. I mean, there, it's it's a bar that just happens to have arcade games, but it also has like, um, so it also has like Golden Tea, and it has well, yeah, it's, Buck it's, Hunter, and you know, it has the... <laughs> what the buck? It, you know, those are arcades, but that's different. Like, one up yeah. is, a, is a unique concept. One up is, like, I've only been there the one time. That place blew my mind. Because, it's awesome, like, huh? Because I think it was a Saturday night that we were there, and it's in Lodo, which for people that don't know is like the hip section of Denver where like all the bars are and stuff. And the shootings. And, yeah, and the violence. Which I wouldn't <laughs> Yeah. But it's weird because you go in there on a Saturday night, and like I would say a third to a half of the people are there to play video games. Like they're nerds like us, they're 30 years old, they remember these games, they go in there to play them. And then another third to a half of the people that are in there are douchebags. Like, are, are like bar hopping douchebags that are in there because it's a bar. They don't give a shit about the video games. They're gonna play them because they're there, but they're and they they find it like a novelty. But that's not why they're there. They're there to drink and to get you know to get laid. Poontang. And then you know like the rest of the people are like you know maybe somewhere in the middle. But it was really strange because like you'll see some super ass sweaty nerd wearing like a Mario T shirt. And he's there to play video games. Is that Eric? No. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> and then, and then, like some right brawl. next to him is some like brawly. some, some like, yeah, it's like some some you know twenty two year old douchebag with a popped collar and way too much cologne on looking for a chick. It's just <laughs> hilarious. The place blew my mind. I couldn't like it was not what I expected at all. We got to go back. I love it. I well, and they're open all day too, and they have a full menu. They serve food. Yeah. yeah. They serve oh. a bacon cheeseburger. The well, I I learned I. Learned about this originally as the Luther Burger, Luther Vandross's signature uh, burger. They call it their own thing, but it's a bacon cheeseburger or variation thereof with a donut instead of a bun. So awesome. What? Yeah. No, it's like a sourdough style, like sourdough style bread, but it's a donut. So it's like they take a regular ass donut and they do like a panini thing on it or something. And Smash it's it. really, really good. What do they do? That's Smash it, maybe? terrible. Smash it. Oh, it's so good. You know what Tony Horton would say to you right now? <laughs> he would be like, fuck that. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's not just it's not just a bar that has arcades. It's it's, Barcade. it's an arcade it's that has... It's a destination. It's an arcade that has a bar in it. That's what it is. Yeah. They have all the... I would agree with that. The art on the wall. They have all these original arcade yeah. posters from like the 70s and early 80s. They have like a Billy D. Williams like metal poster that's on sale for like six fourteen hundred fourteen hundred dollars. Yeah, some something. crazy amount. They have like a big ass Mike Tyson's Punch Out poster. Yeah, that thing's badass. They have and little... the the beer taps. They actually took an arcade cabinet yeah. 
and converted it so they removed the screen and mm-hmm. replaced it with like stainless steel and then they have like 14 or 15 beer taps on yeah it. it's some it's some taito beer it's fucking awesome yeah. and they have good beer there too they have really good yeah. beer they have interesting drink they sell 40s people love that shit they yeah, yeah they drink for 10 dollars for weed they for ten dollars, yeah. They sell this horrible drink that Ecto-plasm. Eric and I tried that isn't very good, but it, it's called Ecto Cooler. But that's just you know, it's all just in the theme. It's yeah. it's a you couldn't come up with a better way to make an arcade bar, and I don't think anywhere else in any city will. You can match it, but you can never best it. It's a great place. I hope it stays around forever. We'll see what it happens. Will. I agree. Uh, bars downtown, Lodo bars don't last. They don't you know the, that was something you know we're going to be talking about later, but there might be a future for like this retro gaming like if you want to call it bubble that we're in now, like, you know, retro gaming is really popular right now. It's in, you could call it a fat or whatever, but I think it might be around the state for, for a long time because of some stuff we'll talk about coming up. But anyway, well, I think as well, just as the most casual gamer here of, of the three of us, maybe because you guys are more, especially you, Eric, are more surrounded by this world, you know, mostly more than anyone else. Mm. You're a super nerd. Mm. I don't, I think the retro gaming craze or whatever it may be has a lot of steam i think it has a long way to go because i don't i mean people that i know that play games pretty casual they don't nobody knows about it they like old games but they don't know about a a fad of retro gaming i don't think it's as big as you may think it is overall i think it has a long way to go i think it can keep going it can go the distance <laughs> you know what i think if you will you know what i think beer i had to be real loud i got beer everywhere so that's good you have to remember that when you see a kid walking down the street with a like a Mario 3 t-shirt from Hot Topic, that kid's not really into retro gaming. It doesn't mean he couldn't be. You know, well, he won't be. It just means that that person just bought a t-shirt because it's kind of cool to have a Mario shirt. But I think that more and more people can get into retro gaming, especially young people. Kids, if you will. Just as far as stuff that's happened in the past um, going forward to now, the mainstay as far as like games that have come the longest, games, uh, game companies that have come the longest would be Nintendo. <laughs> come the longest. Nintendo keeps coming. They come the longest. They, they have rope after has, rope. Oh, shit. Ropes. <laughs> Nintendo's been climaxing <laughs> since 1985. They always have whitish consoles. The way I said it. Off-white, oh, maybe. Man. I don't know. Yeah, Famicom, yeah, if you have an Famicom old, was white with red, which is a little troubling, but if you have so, an old Super Nintendo, the bottom half of it's off white for Gizmodo sure. today posted a list of the weirdest Reddits, like Reddit like forums. And one of them is coming on action figures or something like that. <laughs> pictures of like yeah, figurines that people. <laughs> Do you remember when they used to, in the eighties they had slime everything? Slime yeah. all of your action figures. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> Come on them Someone now. Took that to the God, they did. And there, there's one of, like, pictures of people pooping. <laughs> On action figures? Yeah. No, just, just Fuck pooping. off, Skeletor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, wow, we got derailed. So, that was awesome. I liked it, though. It was a um, train wreck. Yeah. I'm looking at your uh, Ninja Turtles over there. And yeah. Having it, unnatural thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> that was in my game room. Sure <laughs> you can pay me. I'm a bee. Fuck it. So, um... <laughs> But anyway, Nintendo has had the longest running. Can I say that? Is there? Oh, is he going to make a longest diarrhea coming, joke? Oh, running. okay. But um, you know, there were other there were other companies that tried to make a console and make it stick. Like, oh god, now I said stick. <laughs> <laughs> but Turbo Graphics, Sega had many many consoles, and now they just make games, make games for other consoles, any console. Um, and but you know, the only ones that are around now, we got Nintendo. Like I said, they've been around for a long time. Sony has only been here since PlayStation 1, and then we got Microsoft, you know. And honestly, I'm surprised that Microsoft made it after the Xbox. Like, I remember seeing the original gargantuan controller for the Xbox, and I was like, there's no way this is going to catch on. This is dumb. And then Halo came out, and I thought it was okay, but man, that just like really like blasted things off for, for Microsoft. I mean, if it weren't for Halo, you know, Xbox might have just been dead. They may have. I don't know. That's just my observation. But what do you guys say? I mean, I, I actually now, I mean, Xbox 360 is one of my favorite consoles. And I'm glad that Microsoft made it in. But, you know, we still have, you know, Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft. That's the, that's the new three. Well, I think, well, Microsoft took advantage of the fact that Nintendo was still kind of going after somewhat casual. Maybe 
not as maybe not cat nintendo was going after more non-hardcore gamers you know they all the restrictions on violence in their games you know they're and i everybody loves mario and they had the great first party titles but you know microsoft i think probably could brush them to the side and just deal with the playstation 2 at the time which i'm sure was you know a one-on-one battle but i don't know microsoft just had probably so much money to pump into advertising and getting the rights, you know, to make have different companies make games for them. You know, there were these games that were competing for a place in the running, and we had Turbo Graphics, but that fucking went nowhere. Nintendo stuck through the whole thing. Jaguar. And Sega died. Well, fuck, that's awful. Neo Geo. I had no running. Well, we can talk Get about... $800, buy it. Yeah. <clears throat> More than that nowadays. But So next, what I want to talk about is the, the punishment for anything that you fuck up in a game. Basically, in the old days... The death penalty, I guess if you want to call it, in video games was harsh, severe. Sometimes you had very limited lives. I mean, most of the time you had really limited lives. Sometimes you had, like, no hit bar. It's like you get hit one time and you're dead. Like, we're talking about, like, Adventure Island. You get hit one time, you're dead. That's it. And also, the whole time you're running, your health bar, I guess if you could call it that, is counting down to nil. As soon as you get down to zero, you die. So, you know, it was so harsh back then. Like, that's kind of going back to the whole thing about, you know, old games being this niche thing because it was all hardcore. Because, like, you're not going to see a casual gamer pick up a hardcore game like that where you're going to die and die and die, like Contra or something like that. If you don't have the 30 life, you know, the 30 life code, you're going to die. And you're going to be done before you get through the first level, probably. So, I mean, in the past, it was super hard. And nowadays, they're really... Their games are, I mean... We're kind of spoiled. I mean, like, even if you look at some of the shooters and stuff like that, you don't have a health bar. It's like, per se, I mean, if you're playing, like, um, Modern Warfare, it's like the frequency of hits. Like, if you get hit a lot really quick in a row, you'll die. You know, it's like the screen starts, like, you get bloodshot eyes or whatever, and then you'll just die. Same thing with Gears of War and a lot of other, you know, modern shooter games and stuff like that. It's like, and also... If you just find cover, you're going to regenerate your health bar. And if you die, you just respawn where you came back. I mean, like right there where you died. And in a lot of games uh, like nowadays are built like that. And in the ba- in the past, it was like if you died, it was like a tragic event because you got to go way back. I mean, yeah, it's basically impossible to fail at modern games. Yeah, no, basically, yeah. It, versus like old games, they were like, man, like, you know, people talk about Nintendo hard. You know, this game is like Nintendo hard. I mean, there's something to that because some of those Nintendo games like 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 Battletoads and games like that, you know, freaking brutal, ruthless hard. And now it's like we're kind of we're, you know what's weird we're candy asses, basically. I remember Battletoads being really hard when it came out, but it didn't seem that weird that it was that hard. Cause it was, like it, it was it was a hard game. I remember thinking this game is hard. Part of the course. But I felt like it was my fault. Like I felt like I just wasn't <laughs> playing it well enough, you know? But now, if you go back and play shit like that, that game is way too fucking yeah. hard. Like, you start playing that, like, fuck this, I'm not playing this shit. It's too hard. Yeah, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That one's in a good I game. I love that game. I, I still think it's a good game. But it's way, way, way too fucking hard. Like, the the penalty is severe because, you okay, you have four players. They each have a health bar. There are ways to die instantly. And once they're gone, they're gone. And you can't... I mean, the levels are so hard. Like, people always talk about the dam, like, the second level. You blow up, all of your guys die instantly. But even then, if you get past that point, the farthest I've ever gotten, I don't know if I ever beat it. I'm pretty sure I didn't, but I remember getting into the Technodrome, and then stuff was just so hard. Like, the respawning enemies, and, like, each screen had different enemies on it. It was so freaking hard. It was ridiculous. (laughs) Now, you don't seem to think the dam was that... I mean... When I was a kid, to get past the dam was like the ultimate achievement. Anything else beyond that was just like, <laughs> just bonus. <laughs> I remember, no, it was, it was you know it was hard, but once you get the knack of it, you can get through that without getting electrified too much, going through the seaweed or whatever. But it's funny, like you know, like Andrew said. I mean, you feel like it's you feel like you are at fault because you couldn't yeah, beat back that then, part. That yeah, was back then when you couldn't beat a game. It's because you weren't good enough at yeah. it. It wasn't because the game was too hard. Like I don't remember ever thinking this game is too hard as a kid. Like, to me, when I played games as a kid, I always felt like I just need to get better at it. I need to get better at it. You need to, be better, need to get better. Yeah. But now when I play a game, like, if it's too hard, I just say this game's too hard. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, you know, Although games... modern games aren't too hard. Like, you, yeah. you basically can't fail at a modern 
game. Pretty much. I mean, you know, first of all, like you start a new game of any kind, there's like a whole tutorial section, which is kind of why, you know, in the last podcast, Andrew kind of made fun of me because I'm like, I read, I still read like the instruction manuals, <laughs> which are pretty much non-existent nowadays. Like you buy modern games nowadays, sometimes you're lucky to get a little sleeve when you pop yeah, open yeah. the case at all. And sometimes it's just really small because I mean, you can go online and you can find all this stuff out, but it doesn't even matter because it's like the first part of the game is basically tutorial. Yeah. And then after that, you know, but old games, they threw you in and they're like, all right, figure it out. Yeah, I don't luck. know. Good luck. Basically, like you know Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest good luck basically drop you in the world hope you can figure out these like totally evasive comments that people explain you know they're like explaining what you're supposed to do but it's so convoluted you would never know to do some of that stuff versus nowadays where it's just like you kind of they kind of hold your hand through the whole process you know and it takes something away from like the achievement of like figuring the game out I don't know I don't know that kind of brings that we were going to bring back bring up Fez again and uh, that's what that's one of the things I, I'm loving about that game so much is because uh, they don't explain things they don't hold your hand in that game like they do a little bit like the little um, you know the little I don't know what the hell it is. The thing that follows you around and helps you out, you know. I don't know what it's called. I don't know. Either. It's a pixel. A little, we'll yeah. call that Super yeah, yeah, Paper it's Mario. Totally it's like a pixel, like Paper Mario. <laughs> but it like follows around and helps you out, and it'll be like, hey, you know, do this, and if you, you know, if you hold X and and rotate it, it'll rotate this thing or whatever, and 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 it'll explain the things to you that are necessary to complete the game. But that game has this whole sub game underneath it, I mean, like all these extra puzzles and all this extra shit and all these extra secrets that you don't know how to do and it doesn't help you do those the game you know the the little pixel or whatever will just come up and you hit the the b button and it'll be like what is this i don't know what this is i wonder if we can figure out what this does and it, they leave it up to you to figure that out and i'm loving that because i haven't seen a game do that in a really long time and there's a substantial amount of that in the game it's not like a puzzle here and there oh i mean the game is riddled with it um, I think there's as many dark cubes in the game, which are the, the secret hidden ones that are hard to find, as there are regular cubes yeah. in the game. So you can complete the game, and you've only done half of what there, what there is to do, and the other half is much harder than the first half. Yeah. And uh, I'm just loving it. And it's, it's the first game I've played in at least 15 years where I've actually had to write down notes. That was exactly what I was going to say because like, I, I told my coworker about this game. I said, dude, you got to play Fez. He's like, what is it? I'm like, just download the trial. And he generally trusts my <laughs> expertise on this kind of stuff. So he's just like, whatever. He just downloaded it. And he, was, he spent a whole weekend playing this game. And he's playing it and he's got a pad of paper out and a pen and he's sitting there writing down stuff because he's figuring out like the language in the game yeah, and right. stuff like that and his wife comes down she's like what the hell are you doing he's like she's like are you writing a novel or something he's like no I'm trying to figure out this game she's like what I mean that's something that we totally don't do anymore and I, I guess later on we're going to talk about that but I mean that's something that's also kind of lost so I mean yeah it's it's I mean whatever cliche or whatever but it's a neo retro game it's a brand it new game that's designed with new mechanics that are also at the same time retro. Yeah, it's the most retro feeling game I, I think ever. I mean, you know, there's games like you know, there's there's things like you know, I mentioned Castle Crashers, which is kind of a, a retro beat 'em up style game, and there's things like you know, the new Mega Man games, which are very retro style. So I guess those are p- very purely retro. And then there's you know things like uh, Braid and things like that that are you know they're they're platformers in the old sense of the word with kind of newer mechanics in it. But this one is the most like. It's the most nostalgic, like, neo-retro game I think I've ever played. It, it feels so much like a retro game, but it wasn't possible 15 years ago, yeah, 20 years ago. For sure. And that's what, that's what I love about it, is it, it takes advantage of the newer hardware, but it gives me that, that same feeling that I had from old games. Well, I've, this is kind of a, like a theme that would cover everything about, as a retro gamer compared to modern games... But I wanted to talk about it in this part because it has to do with the challenge of old games versus new. Is that the whole? This is like a philosophy type shit. But like, it, no, really, it's like it's, it's dumb. I'm not trying to sound philosophical, but like, why do we do? Why do we play sports? Why do we play video games? Why do we do all this stuff? Because it's all it's all about accomplishment. You want to accomplish something. Achievement. Well, no, <laughs> that's all, no, no. It's you want to accomplish something you want to beat a level you want to level up your character but you want to have accomplished something at the end of the day if you don't you're not going to have fun doing it but there's not nearly as much accomplishment in a new game as there is in a retro game and that i don't really think you can argue that fact that's that's just the way it is i don't personally i like i've been playing a lot of skyrim and it's a fun game and among many things in new games like you know choosing a difficulty level and 
uh, you know, on the PC, you can, you know, cheat pretty easy if you wanted to. I, I, I mean, I love playing it. And I lo it's almost like going through the motions, though. It's like no matter how far I get in the game, I don't really feel like I accomplished yeah. as much as if I played any old game. I totally agree. Any old game. Like, you play it long enough, and you will succeed at newer games. But older games, you know, you had to actually master a skill in order to complete it. And then there was there was a great sense of accomplishment once you actually finally achieved that was the Yeah, through. it was like the ultimate sense yeah. of, I mean, for sure, the ultimate sense of accomplishment. I mean, like I was going to say, you know, I, most, I don't know when, I guess I have researchers, I don't know when the first game, I don't even know what the first game was that offered where you could choose a difficulty level. But pretty much any NES game I ever played, you couldn't. There just no, was one often. difficulty level. It's just <laughs> hard as balls. I mean, fighting yeah. games, fighting games usually had it. That was the first time I remember doing that. But usually it's you just play the game as it is. That's the, like like you said earlier, again, to repeat it, it's your fault, not the game. <laughs> the game is what it is, and you're going to undertake that challenge, but it's not the game's fault that it's hard. You just, you're not good. you got to keep practicing. <laughs> exactly. But every young kid nowadays can tailor whatever game they play to whatever skill level they're at. And I, ha I always had a horrible habit of doing this where I would always put the game on the easiest difficulty level, always. So I would beat it. I'd beat it, but I never felt like I accomplished anything. Yeah. Like even um, when we played Earth Defense Force, I don't think we put it on the easiest level, but we I never played it on the hardest. I know you did. I never did. I beat it on Inferno. So I love, yeah, well, see, that's ridiculous. I loved beating it, but for, I mean, what? I, I was never really truly challenged. I mean, you're just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. And so I think as a whole, in my opinion, I think you can't really argue that new games are ever going to be as hard as old ones because you can, oh, it's all customizable. You just... Yeah, I think I mean, modern games are, are all about story and game mechanics. Mm. And, you know, they're either... A game is good if it either has a good story or some interesting new mechanic, but otherwise they're all cookie cutters of one another, mm. really, when it comes down to it. But old games, you know, retro games, they were more about the challenge and mastering some new skill. I mean, we're we're going to talk about cheating a little bit in a little bit. Well, I also think that... I think this is a natural progression that... NES games and maybe Super Nintendo, you know, games, the, well, especially 8 bit games were what they were because a lot of, most of them anyway were arcade ports. And the goal of an arcade game ultimately is to make money. I mean, they're there yeah, for you to, to make you die so that you have to put in more money. <laughs> Which is funny because, like, once you've paid for the game, who cares? But, right. Yeah. But, but that well, was the way people thought, that's the way game developers thought about games. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's the way where they were developed. They're developed in you know, such a way that you had to be really, really good to beat the game on one or two lives. And, you know, arcade games, you generally get, you know, a few lives. And I think most are uh, home ports. You probably maybe were given a little bit more leeway. But like Contra, I mean, you really, without the Konami code, you only have three lives. That's an arcade game. That's how that's yeah. how the arcades work. Yep. And that's, again, the sense of accomplishment when you can get, even if you don't beat the game, if you just get really far. Yeah. Imagine if you were in the arcade and did that same thing. That's crazy to get that far in an arcade game. Yeah. And that's why you would just keep pumping, you know, quarter after quarter after quarter in. I mean, I remember, it wasn't the hardest game, but the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game. I beat that game in the arcade many times with friends, but it took me like $10 oh, yeah. dollars to get there. Seriously. They have it at one up. Yeah. Yeah, they do. It doesn't always work, but... Well, that's what I was going to say. So, and I know this is what's coming up next. So, I, I think that that's how modern game developers can make up for the fact that their games aren't really ultimately all that challenging is by giving you the option then to have separate challenges, which aren't really a part of the, you know, game canon in that you know particular case. Maybe they're separate things you can do. And like most things in, you know, modern in modern times, everything is about showing you know your life off to your friends so just like being on social media and showing people this is where i went today i'm i checked in on foursquare i took a picture of the hike i went on here's my achievements with the achievements you can show all your friends you can have bragging rights and maybe i think that's kind of i think it's kind of cool compared to retro games is that you can prove it yeah i mean like you know some kids say they could beat a game with the minimum amount of lives or whatever but unless you can prove it unless your name's in nintendo with Power, a polaroid the, yeah i actually well, that's, think i have beaten condor on three lives but see, how do we know? You I don't. Know? I don't even know if I have or not. So, but at least with an achievement, you have proof. Yeah, I okay. have beaten Contra Four on the DS. But I mean, you know, as far as like the the death penalty or punishment, old versus new, I guess, you know, the the main thing is like saves. Um, you can regenerate like right away if you die in pretty much any modern game, including Fez. Actually, oh like, yeah, you yeah. there's no penalty whatsoever. Exactly, Fez, you just yeah. you just pick up right where you left off, and the worst penalty is maybe you have to make a couple jumps over again. Yeah. But I mean, like, we're talking about, you know, you can't save at all. Even Super Mario Brothers 3, a game that can pretty easily be accomplished in, I don't know, three, four hours? Depending Unless on. Oh, if, uh, if you use warp whistles, stuff, yeah. you could do it under an hour, probably. Oh, yeah. But I mean, you know, nowadays, 
you can save anywhere. And like Josh was saying with ROMs and stuff like that, you could save every second if you wanted to. Even in like uh, on 3DS, if you download those old games, you can do save states essentially. You know, yeah. Wii games, you can do save states. So, you know, nowadays it's a lot easier than it was back then. And I'm not going to lie, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here arguing about that, but then earlier I told you that I do that on ROMs, and that's because, like, my brain has been trained by all these modern games to save whenever you want, do make the game tailored to your skill level, which takes all the charm out of it, but I'm not going to lie, at home, I love to do that. But when we go to 1UP and play the arcades, I've, I mean, I've sunk, we played Dig Dug the other day for like an hour, Forces, straight. Forces you to be real. We just stopped. We just didn't stop playing Dig Dug forever, and I probably pumped like ten dollars, you know, quarters into just Dig Dug that one night. I want to dig it. I want to dug it. And I only got to level eight. Show me how to dug it. I need to practice you more. You do suck at Dig Dug. Show me how to dug it. I don't <laughs> suck at Dig Dug. We were also. I was drunk. But oh okay. I was inebriated. I was looking at you, but I was, <laughs> I was like, "What? I'm pretty good at Dig Dug." Well, so I guess we're Dig Dug arcade though, not the NES one. Then. That's different. true, yeah. The yeah. NES one's a lot easier. You know, on an aside, Eric, what the fuck's up with Dig Dug Two? It's weird. It's what? What is You're it? You break enough piece of island. I don't know. Because I played it for five minutes and stopped. I just couldn't do it. It's like all the enemies are just right out in the open. You just kill them all. And then I own it in the box. You can break off pieces of island. Do you eat the pieces of. I island? own it in the box. All right. I bought it for a dollar. Thanks for the info. It's awesome. So we're going to move on to the reward system. Nowadays, I mean, back in the day, it was basically points-based. It was like whatever high score you could get. and You it, got 50,000 in Double Dragon? <laughs> yeah, you got 50,000 in Double Dragon in how long? I can't remember in the movie. We're talking about the wizard. We're referencing the wizard. But basically, in the, back in the day, it's like, oh, I got however many points or I got however far. And nowadays, it's like you get rewards. You unlock stuff. You get avatars. You get achievement score. And it's new bragging rights versus old and and back in the day it was probably like take my word for it or you could do a polaroid with a horrible horrible picture (laughs) a horrible picture well to be fair nintendo power magazine gave a tutorial on how to properly take photos they did games i remember that and you could show it it didn't necessarily wanted to look like the magazine which could never really happen i remember that i sent in a a high score i had on banjo kazooie but they never ended up using it but it was really high because they couldn't see it. Probably looked like balls, yeah. I remember developing, I was like, oh, I hope they can tell that's a... Okay. I hope they can tell that that's an eight, not a three. But yeah, it didn't look that good. Let's talk about cheating. Back in the day, the only kind of cheating you could do is basically you could tilt a pinball machine. <laughs> we're not that old, man. <laughs> if you were really old. Actually, man. yeah, I mean, they had tilt sensors in them by the time we were... By the time we were alive. But anyway... <laughs> No, but um, you could use Game Genie or Game Shark later on. But nowadays, you can use mods. Or you can unlock stuff that will allow you to cheat in the game. Once you get a certain point, you can unlock it. I mean, that's been like... Since like Nintendo 64, you could do stuff like that. Like in GoldenEye and Turok and stuff like that, you can unlock all these cheats. You guys are yawning like motherfuckers, both of you. You guys bored by our own podcast? I'd like to keep... I'd like to remind you that my kids wake me up at 5.30 or 6 every morning. Chop! <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of frustrating because, you know, if you're playing like a shooter or something like that, you'll see all of a sudden someone's just fucking winning like crazy. Like, they got to be cheating. But you can mod games nowadays and sometimes you can't tell. Yeah. Hopefully they get caught. Fuckers with the lag switch. Yeah. Playing on, on Modern Warfare and stuff. I mean, it, it's it's... It's a big problem, and it ruins the game for everybody else. It's yeah. shameful, guys, okay? Yeah, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Also, Mario Kart 7, okay? You guys playing Maka Woohoo, and you guys are jumping off the side like that just so you can pop up at the beginning halfway through the race. What the fuck, guys? You're ruining the game. You but broke. You're breaking the game. Is that? But that's in the game. Though. Is that cheating? It yeah, is it cheating. Is, it yeah. is cheating. They just the the designers of the game just fucked up, and they well, didn't realize. Well, the original Mario Kart. You could jump off Rainbow Road on one section. If you timed it just right, you could land and basically like cut your lap time yeah, by like that's three quarters. It's called cheating, Josh. It's taking advantage oh, it's of the bug in the game. Bug. But that's not a bug. That's a, They designed they the track up. that way. They, no, they fucked up, up when they designed it. They fucked up. But that's like saying that because you found a warp well, so Mario 3 you're no, 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 no. That's designed in the game. There's like things that were designed into the game and then there's fucking shit up. I think jumping off Rainbow Road is designed in the game. The track is designed... Yeah, they fucked up the design. I remember doing that. They didn't mean to do it that way. It was, it was, it was, yeah, it was a mistake. It was a fuck. Well, I, I do, no, and I respect your argument, but I've, I don't know. I think cheating is something that's done where you, like you said, like a game genie where you have to go around the code of the game and 
you know, play God basically and really, you know, do well, do whatever you want with it, you know? The, yeah, there's definitely a difference between the two, but I still, like, I haven't played Mario Kart 7, but I, if people were doing that, it would piss me off. It's well, really why bad. Why can't you guys just play the game no matter what you have Exactly, play. and there's so many people, like, every time, you know, you start a match, and I don't know if you played Mario Kart DS, but yeah. that was an awesome game. It was like it was, the first was time you could the play. Best Mario Kart oh, game it was so, yeah, up until 7, it was definitely the best. And and now, it, God, it might even still be the best just because of all the crap that goes on in this one. Um, but, I mean, everyone votes for Makawuhu, and I never understood. I was like, I always lose. I don't understand. And then I looked online. I was like, what the fuck? Everyone's cheating. Every motherfucker jumps off that one spot. And I kept trying to find out. I was like, they must know a different part of the track. No, they're cheating. You, you jump off. Basically, what happens is you get to this one part where you enter a cave, and you turn around, you double back, and you shoot yourself as far off the side as you can. And when you fall, the computer can't tell the difference between levels. And it shoots you higher up on the mountain. It brings you up to the top of the mountain. And that's basically halfway through the track. Even more. Okay. It, then that's, I didn't. I haven't played it. That's different. I agree with you. That's, that, that's That's a cheat. Yeah. Because Mario Kart does... There's always been shortcuts in Mario oh, Kart. Oh, shortcuts are different. Yeah. But yeah. that's... A, yeah. If you're talking about like a glitch where the... It's yeah, basically a glitch. That's different. I agree. Yeah. Mario Kart has shortcuts, has the rubber band effect. Oh yeah, yeah. Which I hate. <laughs> so but the whole yeah. game is, you know, it's meant to be a, as fair of a competition as you can. Yeah, it's meant to be as frustrating a competition. <laughs> <laughs> There's a certain balancing act that goes on with Mario Party and Mario Kart and stuff like that. I mean, kind of playing again to the like the casual gamers and stuff like that. Basically, hey, we got this blue <laughs> blue shell that evens things out. I mean, you know what you're in for. You're not playing Gran Turismo. It's not about like right. race lines. Josh, is that what it's called? It is a racing line. It's not about racing lines. It's about just playing the game and having fun. You know, so it's going to be there's a there's a bit of a balancing act there, and sometimes you're going to win, sometimes you're going to lose. Well, they do a good job doing that. I think so. I guess I keep going back to what Andrew said earlier, but it's a really good point. Is that it's in retro games, especially eight bit games, it was it's almost like you versus the you know person who made the game, you versus the programmer or whatever, you versus the game company because it, well the game is made a certain way, and you just have to try to do as best you can. It's like a one-on-one battle. It's like an arcade. It's like you versus that arcade machine. I at least I always felt like that. It was like you're going into like a little battle with that piece of shit, and you want to try to get as far <laughs> as you can on the smallest amount of money. But again, with a modern game, you kind of it's like here's you a hold game. your hand through it, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna have you tailor it to what I want it to be. But no, with a, with a retro game, and this is the game, and you get to you know test your might, if you will. <laughs> test your <laughs> might. Test your might. Mortal Kombat. And even though you could cheat in retro games with things like Game Genie and whatnot, it wasn't nearly as prevalent as it is now. Yeah. And mods are not like thinking of Skyrim. Mods aren't really a cheat necessarily, but they, you know, it is a way to again just tailor the game to however you want it. But then again, in all modern things, you, I mean, I update apps on my phone daily, all the time. There's always an update, and then you, of course, you know, your phone gets replaced. You know, every two years, whereas game system consoles nowadays are, you know, they last for a a while. Hints and tips. I mean, back in the day, you used to have Nintendo Power or other magazines to find, um, I mean, but with, god damn. Try again, motherfucker. (laughs) I mean, back in the day, you used to have Nintendo Power magazines and other magazines that that you would use for hints and tips. Um, Sometimes you'd use an instruction booklet, but usually that was a little more vague. But nowadays, you know, print is a little bit less relevant, and you go online and you check out g- game facts and stuff like that. I mean, you could use your ad iPad instead of like writing stuff down. I mean, I mean, there's something lost about not having the magazine or the you know, taking little notes and stuff like that, sitting down with pen and paper to draw maps and clues and passwords and stuff That's like why that. Fez is so awesome. That's why because you kind of have to do that. You kind of have to. You kind of have to unless you I mean you could always go to GameFAQ and yeah. be able to, and cheat your way through the game but the fun in that game is in trying to figure it out. Yeah, but I mean, you know, sometimes it's inherent like in the new new games you have saves and in-game maps and objective lists and in-game hints and clues that are accessible by the menu. So it kind of goes past that whole, you know, there's that the aesthetic of like opening your Nintendo Power and be like, "Oh, that's right, Fester's Quest. They have a whole section on it." And you look through it and you look through the maps and you look at the different, you know, tips and clues and hints and whatnot that they have i don't know i mean some stuff you can figure out by yourself sometimes you just can't do it like castlevania 2 simon's quest is a perfect example i don't know i i guess i know one person that claims to have figured out all that stuff by himself but i highly highly doubt it but it is pretty funny when you go into a store and see well i think it's a lot funnier when you see one of those all-in-one 
tips, <laughs> hints, and tricks guides. Like it's one thing to buy a strategy right. guide for a specific game, but Eric and I were in a store today, and sure enough, there's like a little like eight dollar little booklet. And if we just like Xbox you have 360 to, hints and tips. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like you have to laugh about it. like why would someone pay money for that? Like, I mean, go to the library if you don't have internet access. I mean, I'd rather go to the local library if I didn't have internet access and get you know print out game facts. I mean, aside from buying those stupid tips and tricks books, but they still sell them. I mean, there must be a market yeah, for them somewhere. Crazy. Someone's got to be buying them. Oh yeah. They don't have the internet apparently. <laughs> they still have strategy guides from 20 years ago <laughs> <laughs> pretty much they actually do. you could probably buy and then resell them I have some for of them, yeah. profit it's true yeah, you probably flip can. them <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> flip this Super Mario guide Super Mario Super what's the one Mario. Super Mario World guide oh okay yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> flip uh, Crash I'm gonna flip, it, flip them pages um, Spyro but, flip them but again there's something <laughs> <laughs> flip them Spyro so again I mean I guess there's something kind of missed with um kind of lost with like sitting down with paper and pen drawing maps and clues and stuff like that um this is a story i talked about before on happy video game nerds dvd but i wrote a map down of uh metroid but it was just a paper towel <laughs> and, I, and i made a map based on memory of metroid so i was writing it down with pen and a fucking paper towel and i wrote it down it was a pretty comprehensive map you're talking metroid or super metroid no metroid okay. back in the day and i wrote it down it's probably awful but it was just from memory so when I was showing my mom and I was like outside and we were walking to my house and I was like, here's what I did while I was at the shop. Check it out. And she was looking, oh, that's really nice. And all of a sudden a bird shat and it came down and it pooped in my hair and it pooped on the map. What? The map like was dissolved because it was a paper towel. And I was like, oh no, we got to go in and rinse it off. She's like, hon, you're, it's gone. You got to loot. You got to throw this poop away. And it's poop paper. And I didn't understand. I was like, no. I've worked so hard on it. Back in the day, you used to rent games from Blockbuster, for example, and nowadays you could do Gamefly or trial demo games online. That's different. Talk about it. You could actually rent systems from Blockbuster, too, not just games. Hey, you could rent a Nintendo 64. That's what I did like three times before I won mine on at Target. I talked about it on brag. Retro TV Part 3. I talk about it. Well, Super Nintendo, I'm sure, came out holidays 1991, too. My birthday wasn't until July, so I didn't get it until the next year. So I actually rented Super Nintendo twice before I was able to get it, you know, for real. I kind of was hoping also if I just rented it enough, my mom would just get fed up and just buy it. (laughs) But she did. She held out and waited until July of the next year to, you know, to purchase it for me for my birthday. But yeah, you could rent systems. You could rent games. That was like the local hangout, man. That's where you went. You could smoke candy cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Blow that candy powder out. I would get. I would sell Mike and Ike to kids. Tell them it was drugs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Don't eat the purple ones. <laughs> Those are the downers. If you want to go down the bunny hole, eat the red one. <laughs> if you want to go back, <laughs> the bunny eat the blue hole. hole. And the blue bull. Eat the blue hole. <laughs> Eat the blue pill and you go back. Oh, the Matrix. Anyway, blockbusters are going away. You're not going to rent games anymore at a physical store. Nowadays is different. You do it online. The end. Bow. Josh wanted to talk about something. Well, there's not actually a whole lot to talk about. Because by memory, which doesn't always serve you correctly, I seem to remember video games, I thought they were a little more exclusive just as a whole when we were younger in the 80s, late 80s, maybe early 90s, because they were a lot more expensive. But then I started doing some research and... I don't know how credible some of the sources are, some of which include Wikipedia, of course, but <laughs> like using um, an inflation calculator I found online through the U.S. Census Bureau, it, I, I thought games seemed to be a lot more expensive, you know. When Relatively. They first, yeah, well, re- well, everything's relative. I mean, things cost less, but people made less money. Long story short, what I found out was it was probably like between a 10 and 20% difference in cost back then than there is now. I kind of compared when, um, between 1985 and 1988, when the uh, NES came out. It was 200 bucks, right? Well, the... The games were 40. I'm glad you asked, <laughs> Andrew. I'm glad you asked. So the uh, control deck, which was I, one of the first systems, the NES system to come out, came with the system, came with two controllers, and it came with just Super Mario Brothers. It cost $100 in 1985. Are you shitting me? Mm-hmm. It was hundred dollars. No, well, there was there was another set that did, but the control deck was like a pretty basic one. Um, that was hundred dollars. So that was in two thousand five, which I used as the example. That was when the three sixty came out. That was one hundred eighty dollars in two thousand five, which was pretty cheap because when the three sixty first came out, that kind of equivalent system uh, cost two eighty. So system wise, it was actually a lot cheaper in the eighties. There was the uh, NES Action Pack, which is what I remember getting, which was in nineteen eighty eight. 
that was a system, two controllers, and then it had the combo game, the Super Mario Bros. and Duck Hunt, and it came with the NES Zapper. Uh, that was 150, which is equivalent of 2000, uh, equivalent of 273 dollars. Um, and then the kind of the equivalent one on Xbox was the Xbox Pro, the 60 uh, gig, which was a system, only one controller, no games, and it came with a headset. And that was 300. So that was a little more equivalent in price. The, the systems weren't really more expensive. They were actually cheaper, which kind of, I was wrong on that. That's blowing my mind. Um, <laughs> really, no, they weren't as expensive as you thought, but the games were a lot more expensive. So the games were on average between 30 and $50, 1988. Um, in 2010 dollars, that's between $56 and $94. A game, so that's a pretty considerable difference because I think the most expensive games now that come out for the 360 or PS3 are 60. 60 is kind of like the going rate. Unless you have a special edition or something. So you're comparing, you know, the, and the most expensive then in the 80s, almost a hundred dollars in today's money. So that's a lot more expensive. But really, again, when you combine the 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 two things, like for let's say for Christmas, your parents buy you one of the sets and a couple games, it's really not that big of a difference in price. So hmm. um, argument doesn't hold water. The end. Wow. <laughs> I'm actually that's. Really fascinating because yeah. I thought I thought for sure the NES was two hundred when it came out. Well, what I so what I found was if you if your parents when you were a kid in nineteen eighty eight for Christmas Hanukkah Kwanzaa whatever bought you if they bought you what I would call a good system which I would say the action pack which is Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt and let's say we were awesome parents gave you three extra games in today's money they would have spent five hundred sixty five dollars which to me seems like a little more than a parent would spend on like a five year old kid. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, yeah, but, for sure. And that's just for a video game. It doesn't include the other uh, toys you would have bought for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. So That's probably the entire budget. And that, So, exactly. And I, I remember as a kid getting that, but also getting other stuff, too. And it, it seems like maybe parents really stretched themselves when we were kids to buy that stuff because it was, it was just a lot more exclusive. I mean, if you wanted to be the cool kid that didn't get beat up on a regular basis, <laughs> Eric, Aww. you had to have a Nintendo. You had to have something, you know. In the in late 80s, it was Nintendo. Of course, you had to have a Super Nintendo. You have whatever was popular. You had to have the system. You had to have a multitude of games. But imagine being... I remember there was a kid I knew that had like 30 games. Those freaking things were almost $100 each. You have all 96 games for the Nintendo? <sighs> that was a wizard reference. Yep. The Power Glove, it's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. So bad. Either way, though, I just... I feel like that was... Something that made video games more exclusive, retro games more exclusive, was that it wasn't as common as nowadays. I think every kid has a Nintendo. Uh, every kid has at least a 360. Most of them have a Wii, but they always have at least more than one system. I don't know the numbers on that, but I'm sure that most average U.S. households, regardless of income level, have two video game systems at least. If they have more than one kid, for sure, they certainly have at least one. Definitely, definitely, and they all have cell phones, which have a multitude of games yeah, right, available right, for them. Yeah. They have all these different platforms. Whereas, of course, the technology was newer back then, but back then they only had pretty much one system, and it was expensive. It wasn't, you know, I don't know what the numbers are again on old computers, but you know, man, computers yeah, back computers in the day were fucking were, expensive, like mind-blowingly expensive. So most, I don't think most families had those, no. especially not for gaming. But they definitely could buy a Nintendo, even though they had to stretch their money a little bit, but. They didn't want little Johnny to get beat up on the side of the road. <laughs> Have the school bus run him over. No. There's a video of that. On the that internet. almost happened to me. Yeah. In real life. I, I did I did read an article on Yahoo talking about the $60 price point isn't going to cut it anymore. Because it's way too expensive for people, I mean, first of all, in this economy. And they're just over they're overcharging, basically, is what it comes down to. The PS4 and the next-gen systems yeah. are, are, are rumored to be exclusive... One, you buy the game, you buy it brand new, it's exclusive to your system. There's a code, and it's going to be only playable on your system. You can't take that same game that you bought for 60 bucks or however much the next price point is going to be on the next gen, but you can't take it to your friend's house and play it. It won't work. Yeah, you have to play it on yours only, and you uh, can't... Every you know, there's, there, there's no used games yeah. anymore, and the PS3 was going to do the same thing, and, and they got a lot of flack for that, and that was pretty much a bad starting point for the ps3 because they got a lot of flack from like the game fans and stuff like that they were like basically we're the baddest badasses in town after the ps2 we can do whatever we want and they said hey there's no more used games and 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 you're just gonna have to buy one game for one system and that's that and there was a big backlash and they're talking about it again yeah the rumors about the new microsoft console doing the same thing and i think both sony and microsoft are come out saying that's not true we're not doing that however there's no doubt every new console that comes out is going to have a heavy uh, bias towards downloadable games. And I think you're going to see, I mean, retail games in the next console, I'm sure it's going to be true that 
every retail game is going to be downloadable same day, and they're going to encourage people to do it that way because if you download it, ten bucks cheaper. Ah, I bet it'll be the same price. More it's, it's, it's so much more convenient. But I mean, why would you buy it? Why would you do that? Why would you? Because you don't have to leave your house. I can wake Man, up if it comes out it. on April twenty eighth. I can wake up the morning of April twenty eighth and be playing it. That's not worth it to me because I would well, rather buy the physical you, thing because I like are, the. I like yeah. to have the packaging and the physical thing, and I can resell it. I don't give a shit about that. But what if I want to resell can it? Can you resell, though? You may not be able to, as you were saying. Yeah. You might not be able to buy a used game. It's hard well, to that, say. I mean, it's hard to say what's going to happen. I think they're, they're, they're strongly going towards downloadable content. I think the next generation consoles are going to lean heavily on downloadable content. Now, they're not going to piss off the retail stores by eliminating retail discs, but I, I'm sure that it's they're going to very strongly encourage that you download your games and make it as easy as possible to download it so that people do that. Maybe they do give a discount. Maybe the game's five bucks cheaper, ten bucks cheaper, or whatever. If they did, it would make it worth it. Like you know, iTunes. I mean, if you buy a brand new disc, if you go to a Best Buy, it's gonna be sixteen bucks or whatever. Most of them are nine ninety nine. Yeah, it's like a common thing. Like that, I would see value in that. You could down still download the digital booklet and stuff like that. But what's the motivation to do that for video games? Because I mean, if you could still sell it, that's fine. But if not, like I mean, what's the what's the future of, of games? Right off the bat, easiest way you can save money: not packaging all those games and printing out all those you know, yeah, oh, yeah, instruction booklets. If you're gonna download a game, there it's just like it's like the record companies make all their money because they have to you know they're the middleman between the artist and the person who buys the music. If you could download directly from the artist, there's a lot of money lost there for the record labels. And maybe it's not the best example, but point is there's there's no middleman. There's no yeah. There's no packaging costs. There's no having a deal with GameStop. And I'm sorry, but GameStop and all those yeah. other corporate, they they have they can't tell the game companies what to do. They don't have any power in that. They don't, I mean. They, no, they do a little bit. GameStop is the number one source. Like, they I sell hate, more games than anyone else. And I hate them but for that. Why, but yeah. if you can buy a game online and buy right, the right. If you digital make it copy, easy, yeah, then why, would, why would you ever go to GameStop? Even if they're the most convenient source now, yeah, very true. what's more convenient than just staying at home in your pajamas and buying it that day it came out that morning? And play it. Well, I mean, if you, you can't get prestige on day one. <laughs> well, I mean, if Do you it. can't if you can't resell it, then there is no reason really to buy it. You know, I don't, know how, much, I don't know how much that matters to people. I've never sold a game. I've sold games well, and I regretted it. I mean, obviously, GameStop does very well on yeah, used games. So absolutely. Play, I mean, that's where most of this. That's where most of the profit is. I mean, I used to work yeah. at a used game store. Josh and I both did. The game. The the profit is in used games. I mean, they make a huge profit on that. They make. 10% profit on new games maybe yeah, if they're maybe lucky that, yeah. I mean yeah because it's really all in the used games so I mean what's going to happen to the game stops and like the little mom and pop spots that sell used games I, that's the, kind of the other part I want to talk about I mean like you know we were in this maybe potentially like a retro gaming bubble right now but I mean what's going to happen if all of the the everything shifts over to like brand new games are, are they're not going to let you have used games anymore because you're not going to be able to sell the games that you buy. I mean, it could make the like retro gaming scene like more prevalent because you and more expensive actually. I mean, cuz all the old games will become more valuable because you can't buy those old games anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, there's rumors about not. it. I don't think any any of the modern no, the next gen consoles, I don't think they're going to restrict used game sales. What I could see them doing is making it so that if you buy a used copy of the game, you have to pay a fee in order to be able to play it, which you already see with things like I don't I don't remember what they call it. EA has the system now for some of the sports games where you you know if you unless you buy the new retail copy of the game you have to pay 10 bucks to be able to pay it online and i can see that happening more and more but i don't think they're ever going to get rid of the used game market entirely ea stands for extreme assholes <laughs> i don't know i think that's all irrelevant because if again if games are made available digitally and that's where it's going which i think it is because they've been talking about that shit for years mm. i think truly the future of of most any media, whether it's movies, games, or music, is all... I mean, Download music's one. almost all digital. Yeah. Yeah. Video games might be the last piece. I'm sure movies would be the next one. But all that used... used What's a used digital game? That, that's, you know, it's irrelevant. I mean, it's not used. Yeah. It's just... But I think maybe like Microsoft Office and Microsoft Windows. I mean, you can only use that on one system, on yep. one computer. Oh, and okay. nobody complains about that. That's just the way it is. Yeah. I mean, that's the way it's always been. So maybe people didn't know any different. So it might be a you know teething period with video games. But... <laughs> I th I think that that's for sure the future. I am sure that in you know in ten years, there almost all media will all be digital. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's easy, and again, it saved the game companies a lot of money. And again, also, it's very green. 
Because who gives a fuck? All right. But, so, well, but again, that's a good argument, though, when you're talking about new games versus retro, because someone like you, who's, a pure, I think, at heart, a, a pure retro gamer, you want to have the, the box and the instruction booklet. And, yeah, and I could care less. I don't care I want to touch it. I want to touch it. I want to touch it. But, that, well, no, it's a, you like to have something tangible. And that's There's always going to be a market for those kind of people out there. I want to kiss it. Okay. Rewards. Club Nintendo. Nintendo Power back in the day. You could get some stuff club nintendo is awesome because you can do all these points and coins and you can get new shit it's good stuff i never participated in the old or the new okay the only thing i can speak on that is that i did get the promo vhs videos oh yeah for when games came out i think donkey Kong country might have been one of the first ones it was yeah and then of course when uh Nintendo 64 came out. Yep. The Rumble Pack had its own. Star oh, Fox and the Star Rumble Pack Fox. had its own VHS. So good. We talked about that on episode three of RetroWare TV, the podcast. Did you have to be in the club thing to get those videos? Or how did you, I, I don't think remember so. how I got them. No, I I'm sure that's why we got them. It's on yeah. some kind of mailing list. But... I think it came in Nintendo Power, didn't it? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure it was part of Nintendo Power. Those videos yeah. would be worth more They're than so they're good. Game. Oh my I God. I bet they are, yeah. Dude, they're you got to listen to that podcast. Seriously awesome <laughs> things and they really are they're so horribly awesome yeah no <laughs> so horrible they're so awesome. they're fucking awesome no but um yeah retro tv the podcast episode three we talked all about nintendo 64 and we we talk, definitely talked about uh the nintendo 64 promo vhs and we also talked about the Star Fox uh slash rumble pack promo v- vhs so peep it out all right so let's move on to our question section um i'm not going to be using anyone's last name just to keep things safe um we got anthony anthony types Hey, Eric, what are your thoughts on the Mega Man Battle Network games? They seem to have a love it or hate it reputation, and I was wondering what your opinion is. Um, to be honest, I haven't played them. Um, I've I've definitely been tempted to buy them a couple times when I see them at the used game stores because I love Mega Man. Uh, Mega Man is a huge series, long-running series, and it has like over 60, 70 games or something. And I, I don't know. I mean, I, I know that they tried to model it after Pokemon in a way, they were trying to be like, hey, you know, you buy this game, someone buys that game, you do some trading and stuff. And I don't know. I, I haven't played it. I want to check it out. So I really honestly can't give you a good opinion on it right now. Um, so my opinion is neutral on that. So I want to check them out and I'll get back to you on that. Maybe next podcast I'll bought some games and I'll check it out. Yes. Yeah, I, don't know anything about that. I okay. haven't played any of them either. Next we have ZD Wario. Hey, he's, he's like our favorite listener now. So yeah, ZD Wario types. Hey, dude, you shouted me out in the podcast. Yeah. How do you spell yeah? Did yeah, he write that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I said that, but he said yeah. Um, I totally agree with Andrew that the replay. Hey, so Andrew, good job. My opinion is better than yours. Okay. Um, I totally agree with Andrew that the replayability in games falls back on the actual feel of the gameplay mechanics. I just feel like a lot of game developers put their games out there like box office movies. They don't take the time to perfect and polish games like in the retro days. A lot of developers now just want the bucks. They don't even care about the product. You should have a play. You should have a play with the fans. Things. Oh, you sound like Christopher Walken. <laughs> you should have a play with the fans. Things. <laughs> It'd be awesome. It will be the best thing. Okay, you should have a play with the fans. Thing. It'd be awesome. Thing. <laughs> You could throw out a list of games possible for that. Well, man, I have a massive list of games. Guys, if you guys want to play games, we'll have a game play day. I'm Like I said, Andrew and I talked about this last podcast. I never claim to be like really good at games, but I'll play whatever games you guys want to play. So you guys tell me what games you want to play, and I'll see if I have it in the list. If not, I'll buy it, and I'll try to get good at it, and we'll play the game. I'm not telling you I'm going to be good, but we'll play it. I want to play it. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Um, topics for more podcasts. Um, you should talk about handheld gaming. Some think portable gamings will become obsolete to more accessible iPhone app type games, and we talked about that a bit. Or maybe something like the dumbing down of the industry and how Sony and Microsoft followed up on Nintendo's lead in trying to branch out in the market. Kind of talked about that a bit. Um, that's all I got. Definitely keep on peeping and putting your stuff. <laughs> I like that you use my language. You're talking my language right now. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I want to put it. <laughs> he did so, say we should talk about having a game night, and I agree. We just I want to have pick a, a game to play and yeah, do it. I mean, we should do something retroish. I like Bomberman. Bomberman's retro, but that that game is a neo retro game. Yeah, yeah, we could do a you know. I mentioned Castle Crashers a few times. That Castle Crashers is neo, neo player, retro. That's a neo like. retro game too. What else do they have that's like actually retro? That's not easy to play online. I don't know that we're going to find much like that. Send us your suggestions. We'll yeah, play. we'll take suggestions. All right. Chocozuri. Yeah? Like Chocobo, but Zuri. 
Okay. Ahoy, Eric and company. That's you guys. Okay. I've been watching the Let's Get videos ever since... Well, back when it was going on 047. But I've been watching the Let's Get videos ever since the Yoshi Story Review. And I've watched and enjoyed each video posted since then. I love the podcast series and I listen to each one over and over. Yes, it's that entertaining. Hey, thanks. And I have a suggestion for a possible future... Episode. I think it would be interesting to hear you guys do a podcast commentary on a video game related movie or cartoon. That'd be awesome. Uh, as it would bring up hilarity and awkwardness. And would be interesting to hear your opinion on the media. Keep on trucking, Choco Zuri. Yeah, um, definitely good co- good topic. Josh and I were talking about this earlier on. It would definitely be good to talk about. We could talk about the low points, Mario Brothers, the movie, fucking awful. Yeah, what about Super Mario Brothers 3, the TV show? That's awesome. It is awesome. I actually like it. It's it's so terrible. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's, like, it, but it's like a, it's like a bad awesome. Whereas yeah. The Super Mario movie was just bad. Bad. Yeah. Because yeah. it was like bad awesome. It's like bossum in Super Mario World, <laughs> <laughs> and that was good. But yeah, those are bad. And then Wizard, it had some good stuff going on, but it's definitely weird and eighties and goofy. The Wizard is awesome. It's 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 a weird awesome. It's yes. Wasp. Awesome. It showed. I love the power nostalgic. Play. I so love the bad. power. It's so bad. It I love showed... how they're playing the the Super Mario three in the little tournament at the end. Yeah. And she like knows. She's like, he got the warp whistle and all that. And blah blah blah. I'm like, how the fuck do you? Know? <laughs> yeah, because it's brand new. The first time? <laughs> they showed, but they showed Mario three gameplay before the game was released. Yeah, they did. That, that was, was like, it was basically was a, a massive like hour and a half, two yeah, hour commercial for just for Super Mario Brothers basically, three. Yeah. yeah. And um, Silent Hill. That awesome, awesome. That movie's actually really good. Like, I, I love that movie, and it's really gory, and it's crazy. You know what? I think we should make that, like, not this next one. We got a different topic, and the one after that, maybe. Hmm. Video game movies. Movies. And cartoons. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat was the shit when it came out. Don't deny it, Eric. I know you don't like that. Well, I don't no. call it a series. There's only two of them, but... It, it was. Come on, man. The first time you see Scorpion excited. and Sub-Zero yeah. <laughs> pop out the freaking wooden door. Goro. Some derelict ship. <laughs> Come on, man. Dip. You don't want to fuck with them. I want to fuck with them. And hold on. If you want to talk about the ultimate high point, I'm sorry, but Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the first movie. Uh, yeah. That's not video games, necessarily. Did you see the remake? Well, it was. Did you see that mm. Michael Bay is making a t- t- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie? No. Only he's like. I mutant. told you about it, didn't The I? turtles aren't oh. mutants, they're from space. Oh, they're you like did. That's alien balls. Race from space. Wait, did you tell me about that? I don't know, maybe. That's balls. It's fucking terrible. Ugh. Michael Bay, why are you fucking up? Well, everything? it could be argued though, man, because I was reading a little more about that. Because Krang is, is an alien; he's from outer space, and some of the characters in the series, the, they're not mutants; they're aliens. You're ruining my same. childhood, Michael. Like Bay. Wingnut, he was one of the f- characters in the tournament fighter, the bat guy. Yeah, he was on the rock and roll stage. He was not a mutant; he was an alien. And there's been aliens in the series the whole time; they just didn't play on it that much. It was all about you know mutation. It's gonna be bad. Krang. It's Krang. gonna be bad. Think about Krang. It'll be bad. It's a giant pulsating brain. <laughs> My prediction, bad. Yeah. I okay. <laughs> so, guys, you can send your questions slash comments, not answers, but questions and comments, for us to talk about on the next episode. It's let's get 047 at gmail.com. Just like that, no punctuation. Let's get 047 at gmail.com. Also, um, since my last name came out in the video game years, I've been getting a lot of friend requests on my Facebook. Um, I don't want to seem like a prick, <laughs> but I've not been accepting those requests because um, without getting into it, I had a scary slash unpleasant experience that kind of spooked me out about revealing too much info about myself. So you can friend me and stuff on Facebook under Let's Get. Um, it's just L-E-T apostrophe S-G-E-T, you know, with the space between Let's and Get. <laughs> um and honestly, there's not really anything going on there right now because I'm not too big on the whole social networking thing at the moment. But if it becomes popular, maybe I'll put more stuff and I'll put it. But for now, the best way to follow me is just probably through Twiddler. Twiddler? Twiddler? <laughs> Twiddler? <laughs> We've been drinking, so on Twitter. We're talking about a lot of Or Twiddler. French Twiddler. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, which it's again Goemon047, G O E M O N 047 on Twitter. And you can follow me, and I'll talk about what I'm doing. What else you guys got? I got nothing else. I'm tired. Andrew's tired, so it's been the best podcast of episode fours that that we've had. And wow, episode four on May 4th. What? Quattro de Mayo? 
I think we recorded that. episode one in February of last year, so we're at one a quarter. <laughs> one a quarter. We're Not keeping even. up with it. Not even. <laughs> it's like yeah, we're a little behind that, but gotta keep them salivating. We gotta keep them. <laughs> we gotta keep on putting them and put on keeping them. This has been podcast episode quattro of Let's Get Podcast. I'm I'm uh, featuring me. You gotta put your name. Put it, Andrew. Put it, Andrew, and. Josh. Josh and... You gotta say my name. Let's get... No, A.K.A. Goemon 047. Say my name. A.K.A. Mama's Boy. Say A.K.A. <laughs> Eric. Oh, thanks. And me, Eric. And uh, let's get podcasts. Uh, let's get it. Thanks, guys. I love you. Goodbye. Re- try and record it and like, go around the mic with your mouth. Just don't touch what? it. What? That sounds like a sex act. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Aw, uh, yeah. Now it's just three men in a room. And you're pretty fairly certain this is working? Well, pretty fairly certain. All right, hopefully we're like equal distance. Um, Don't... <laughs> Christ. <laughs> don't fuck that I think it's working. <laughs> Whoa. It's super loud. I Sorry. guess, but dude, I guarantee... Like, I see you talk sometimes. You shift in and stuff. Like, you're going to move I'll, your foot. I'll try not to. Okay, but it's you guys slip... Someone, whoever's more responsible. Fine, Maybe I should sit over there. <laughs> more responsible. No, I'm serious. With with like fucking their feet. Right. Why don't you guys switch if you're so worried about it? Okay. <laughs> Just don't touch the wire. Don't touch it. Huh? Ah! God, you're me. Oh, you totally bumped the table with the mic on it. It's true. It's I probably did. broken now. Did you really? Yeah, the mic was just. God damn, man. Eric, this is the worst setup ever, man. <laughs> what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Right now, there's nothing we can do. He's got to do it, but... Okay, well, tomorrow, I want you to buy a new mic or go online. Uh, I'm just made of money. All right, welcome I'm to... I'm sure it's recording fine. Can you hear it? Welcome to Podcast Richie Rich, because <laughs> fuck it. Because <laughs> I forgot Sibilance. What it Sibilance. Sibilance. Is that a <laughs> thing? I don't know. <laughs> so it's like That's totally what the act about. of being a sibling. Okay, so, yeah. It's always so awkward starting, I don't know why, every time. Just okay. go, go, go for the fun. All right. Go for the fun. It smells like a sweaty nut sack in this one. <laughs> That's kind of the problem, it's like, I have a sweaty nut sack in here. Oh, dude, I forgot to hit record. You guys want to do that real quick? You'll die trying to hit record. M. E. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked up. Let's do it right. M. E. Men? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the best. What does the future hold? Huh? I, I don't we know. We just got done talking about you don't, about all that. You don't know. Sorry, Eric. I'm sorry you have to edit this. What? You saying sorry to yourself? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Eric. This is a hidden track. You didn't know that. I'm going to spill a secret for you, buddy. You have a brother. <laughs> what?